Hi there, it's SJ Thomason, and I'm here with G-Man, and we are going to do a really exciting review today of Bionic Dance's video, and I see that I'm uh, very complimented here to see that Bionic Dance is in the live chat right now, and she's uh, with her fan club. Apparently, some people have identified themselves as her, her fans, so she has a following, and so thank you so much, Bionic Dance, for gracing us with your presence, and also Lavender Lady, because I uh, know we both all uh, conversed on Twitter about everybody. So this is really exciting. And uh, but before we go further, I want to go ahead and introduce G-Man in case you haven't met him yet. So G-Man, I love your your green screen, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. I mean, my guest here, you know, is just, just had to be right next to me because, you know, she's so in love with me and everything, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I heard that that the topic of uh, today happens to be in the live chat and that uh, they're here to laugh at us. So uh, I hope after we educate them today, and believe me, there's gonna be a lot of that going on today. Hopefully, uh, she won't get too mad, go back to her YouTube channel and go wah, 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 because it's gonna be good today. Yeah, it'll be good. And I'm, I'm right now, as we're talking, I'm going in ahead and pulling up uh, her video right here. So we're gonna share this right now and mm -hmm. move right into this. So before we do this, you said you wanted to share some definitions with us. So. Yes, I do. Uh, before we review the video that Bionic Dance did on her YouTube channel, I think it's important to talk about what the definition of uh, evidence is, because this is where Bionic Dance, I believe she's going to be begging for this link when we start getting into this, because a lot of times we'll see Bionic Dance and her guests and people like her ultimately come out and say things like, um, like uh, you know, that, that, that no one's ever provided any evidence for God. There's no proof that God exists. Why should she believe? I mean, that is the theme of her YouTube channel. Well, Bionic Dance, actually, Ashley, can you do me a favor and take away the screen share here for a moment? For one second, because yeah. I have to get to my screen uh, yeah, in order to uh, get this definition, because I okay. can't find it when you got it up there. So the definition for evidence, uh, and this is according to, you know, a basic definition that you find on Google, is a noun, the available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or a proposition is true or valid. Bionic Dance, I'm gonna read this for you again because you need to pay attention to this because I don't think you know what evidence is. The available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. So when you say that there's no evidence for the existence of God, Bionic Dance, what you're saying is, is that the, the facts that we have are not really facts and they don't add up to whether or not God exists. I think that's fair. I don't think I'm straw manning you or anything like that. So Eshe, uh, I know I requested uh, earlier to, to get a little bit of time to talk about this, and I would like for you to pick up on anything I missed, but I want to talk about how uh, people in crime investigations go about determining whether or not something happened, okay? I want a lot of you to picture whether or not, you know, picture a, a dead body lying on the ground, and there's blood and um, on, on, on the ground, and you walked into somebody being hung, basically, and he's dead, he's like this, and there's blood on the ground. And the average person, we're going to call that the bionic dancers of the world and the atheists of the world, will walk into the room and it will automatically conclude this was a suicide. Why? Because all they care about is what's right in front of their face. When we get the specialists, when we get the detectives to come in and take a look at it, they're going to come in and they're going to start noticing that there are footprints. It's like, hmm, this might not necessarily be a suicide. We might have to investigate this a little bit more. Then they might go outside and find some bloody gloves outside the house. Ooh, this is looking really fishy now. Perhaps this is not a suicide. Maybe there's foul play. Then they uh, might look at the so-called suicide note that was there that by on advance would have noticed and notice that it is not even in that person's writing. But you can only get that when you actually do a little bit of work and actually investigate a little bit, right? But it gets even better. When you go down the street, you got four or five eyewitnesses claiming that they saw what happened at the house and it was not a suicide. What it was was is, is a person having a vendetta with them and he wanted to make it look like a suicide. Then you start seeing bullet holes in trees. But that only comes when you actually do investigative work and you can come to the conclusion that it was not a suicide, that there is evidence of a murder. Okay. Now, bionic dancers probably say, oh, that's not evidence of a murder. All you did was find a bunch of footprints. But this is how they argue, Eshe. All you found was a bunch of footprints that could have been from anybody. Them gloves could have been from anybody. Them bullet thingies have nothing to do with what happened. Them witnesses over there could have been making that stuff up. And that's what they do. They deny it and they deny it and they deny it. And there's one more definition that I want to go into, especially when we're talking about Miss Dance here, because she doesn't like it when she's straw man. So I'm going to take my time with this one. And that is the definition for denialism, Bionic Dance. 
And it is uh, in, in the psychology of human behavior, denialism is a person's choice to deny reality as a way to avoid a psychologically uncomfortable truth. Denialism is an essentially an irrational action that withholds the validation of a historical experience or event. When a person refuses to accept uh, something that is empirical or verifiable in reality. Why am I bringing this up, Bionic Dance? Because throughout this video that me and SJ are going to be looking at, throughout this video, spoiler alert, all you're going to see is a bunch of denialism with no facts whatsoever. SJ, did I miss anything? Is there anything that you feel like you need to touch on? Seeing well, I want to I want to sort of wrap what you what you just said into what we know about the Bible. So you mentioned the importance of looking at eyewitnesses. You mentioned the importance of evidence, uh, the importance of going with what the best explanation is for all of this information that we get. And so when we take the Bible and we realize that we do have eyewitnesses to the gospel accounts, uh, I mean, we have eyewitnesses to Jesus' resurrection. We have embarrassing testimony, which adds to historical accuracy. We also have uh, undesigned coincidences where you can actually fit the Gospels and the Book of Acts and the Epistles together, sort of like a puzzle, which is pretty fascinating. And we also have a lot of extra biblical information. So if we use those E's, we have a lot of E's there that uh, help support the validity of the Bible. So I think that we've got a lot of good stuff there uh, inside and outside of the Bible. So. Um, so when we put it all together, like you said, we put all this evidence together and we do the best explanation, which is Jesus is risen. And you know what else we have, uh, SJ? We have design too. We have design. They have evolution, but we have design and we can prove that it's design and that it's not evolution, but we'll save that for another day. So uh, can we actually get to the video? And, and Bionic Dance has a very interesting uh, co-host on her show. Never seen him before. It looks like a, a vapor. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Let's get to the video. Yeah, he does have she's got a co host and they're making commentary in this video. So it's it's a pretty good thing. So let's, uh, let's check it out. Hold on. We just switch screens here. There it is. I have to say for Bionic Dance to her credit. I like her opening. It's much fancier than mine. She's got kind of a high tech opening. Did you think so too? I've always complimented her on her animations. I think her animations are very nice. Uh, I just wish she did it for Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, we like your animations, Bionic Dance. And, uh, and we are I would watching buy it if it was for sale. I would buy it. We are watching what you're saying. I would say thank you to Travis Lee for the compliment. And I'm I'm also watching uh, Bionic Dance. She wants us to get to the good stuff, which is probably her video. <laughs> okay, good. So, okay, so here we go. We've got her video forward and we're just about to start it. I just want to make sure my sound is up. Hold on one second, double check. Yes, yeah, she's, not a very, she's not a very patient. Um, double check uh, speaker. Uh, but she's, she's probably a millennial. So she's got that typical millennial kind of like get to the point type of thing. Yeah, so. put in the microwave, she'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey guys, hey, how you doing? This is Kelly Powers coming to you from the Berean perspective. I want to talk to you today about what does it mean to believe in Jesus? Why should you believe in Jesus? Why should I believe in Jesus Christ? To have a privileged position in society and make complaints about the war on Christmas? Okay, so his answer, I just kind of want to get into this. He said you have a privileged position in society, but G-Man, can you tell me, did you think in the first few hundred years that the early Christian apostles had a privileged position in society? Would you say that was a oh, fair no. assessment? Well, well, actually, they had a very privileged uh, position in society. They were being beheaded. You know, they were being stoned to death. They were being killed. See, I, I can practice sarcasm too, you know what I mean? So, you know, uh, the, the, the early church was heavily persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ, and it was off and on for like 400 years before uh, Constantine finally came into power. So, uh, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's clear the gentleman who's looking like a vapor, I don't know what the heck he's talking about. <laughs> so we'll say it first, and I, I, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll admit the fact that yes, later on in the years, it would have been a privileged position in some societies, some Western societies to be of the Christian church. But yeah. in the very beginning, when the apostles were getting afoot, they had no privileges. They were being beaten, stoned, jailed, imprisoned, everything else. So they really were given an unprivileged position. Many of them were roasted, uh, you know, hung upside down. So we've got a lot of evidence of that. So at, at the beginning, when Christianity was just starting and when people had actually been present to see Jesus, we saw a lot of the unprivileged positions. Let me say this too. I don't think Christians think they're very privileged in China right now, considering every time they open up their mouth, they're being put into re-education camps. You know, I don't, I, I don't think the Christians over there in Egypt who are being crucified over there are, uh, are thinking they're in the privileged uh, position of society either. So I would That's need him true. to be a little bit more specific, you know. Or the Christians who've been kidnapped in some of the countries in Africa and have been forced to convert to Muslim. Exactly. 
So yeah, we've seen we've seen some pretty scary stuff. So we're actually we are in a privileged position here in the United States in that all of us, including Bionic Dance and her cohorts here, we all have the freedom to practice whatever religion we see fit, and we're not persecuted for it, which I think is pretty great. Excellent. Yeah. So let's go on. Bionic Dance is about to comment on her feelings on Christianity. Make yourself feel more awesome than other people for no really good reason. Let's do this. Wait, 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 wait. Bionic dance, that's silly. I, I, I would feel more awesome than, than other people in our society for no really good reason. Bionic dance, even you would appreciate that if you was a child of Donald Trump, yes, if you was the, a, a um, if you was one of his children, you knew if he died, you would be inheriting billions of dollars, I think you would think you a little bit more privileged than the next person in the sense that we believe that we're the children of God and that we our sins have been forgiven and we don't got to deal with the wrath of God like you do. So of course I'm gonna think I'm a little bit more privileged than you, Bionic Dance. But I also I'm wondering about Bionic Dance's background. Like I, I have I have to say I think some of the reasons some atheists become atheists is in rebellion after maybe growing up in a household where they were uh, given a lot of restrictions and maybe told that they weren't allowed to do certain things. In fact, I have a friend who's a Christian and it's kind of a surprise he's a Christian given the household he grew up in because his parents wouldn't let him go anywhere and they were constantly you know, warning him about the devil and this kind of stuff. And I think it kind of scared him. And he said he initially took the atheist route but then he didn't want to hang out with the atheist people he was meeting. So he jumped back into Christianity. <laughs> That's very telling. <laughs> it's kind of interesting but then i but i do go back to that and i do i can see that like i kind of look at bionic dance if you did, you, did it ask you if or let me ask you if you had a bad experience with christians in some way like at school or somewhere and growing up in the house uh and if that might be part of what's led you to atheism if you just want to let us know that in the chat i'll be paying attention to the chat all right so should we go here we go yep, let's go <laughs> Greetings fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here, today with a fellow who goes by Unholy Roast. Thanks for having me, Kate. If we have all had our coffee, then let's begin. You know, Jesus Christ has historically been proven accurate by historians, archaeologists. Whoa there, Susan. Citation needed. This physically hurts me, which is impressive, considering I'm a ghost. The Bible is not a myth. It's not made up. It was made by real people who existed years ago. What's the difference between being made up and being made by people? Or so let's explain what the Bible was made by. So we know that the Bible was, was written over 1,500 years in three different languages in three continents by 40 or more authors. And we also know that it's remarkably cohesive. In fact, around 330 passages in the Old Testament were prophesied and fulfilled by Jesus when he came. So we've got a lot of information there that supports the validity of the Bible. We sure do. And we also got uh, secular sources as well that supports uh, a lot of the, uh, the the biblical events and the people that actually existed like Jesus. Is this is existed like Jesus? By any dance, we even have to would uh, even have to admit that many atheists already have come to the conclusion that Jesus probably did exist. So, as far as the supernatural, I'm sorry, as far as like his miracles and the things that he, the miracles that he's done, that's another story. We would have to provide you with some different evidence for that. But even she has to admit that if she's done any kind of real research that a person by the name of Jesus did exist around the time of Pontius Pilate and uh, around the 70 AD uh, area, uh, era. So, um, and there's also something I wanna say about this too. Bionic Dance, I want you to pay attention to this, okay? Because a lot of you atheists are starting to make this mistake. You said that, what's the difference between a, a, a fictional person writing a book and a human being writing a book? Well, what if I flip that on you when it came to your, your theory of evolution? Uh, we know that there are people writing textbooks every day with, with information about evolution in it, right? Um, how do we know that information is true? You're going to say, oh, that's easy through scientific experimentation. Yeah, the reason why we know the Bible is true is because of investigation. We have evidence for that. And like I said, we have historians, we have secular historians, and pretty soon I'm going to give you some science to show you where you even admitted bionic dance that God probably does exist, in case you forgot bionic, because I didn't. And I'll tell you what I mean a little bit later, uh, Esha. Yeah, I want to I want to read just a couple of quotes here that just to support the idea that we have extra biblical information from historians because that's what uh, Mr. Powers was saying and I like that name Powers I can remember that because that was my maiden name so it's easy for me to remember. Uh, mm -hmm. But Josephus and this is the uncontested portion of Josephus said at this time there was a wise man who was called Jesus his conduct was good and he was known to be virtuous and many people from among the Jews and the other nations became his disciples. Pilate condemned him to be crucified and to die and those who had become his disciples did not abandon his discipleship. 
They reported that he appeared to them three days after his crucifixion and that he was alive. Accordingly, he was perhaps the Messiah concerning whom the prophets have recounted wonders. And so that was the idea of the miracles that you just mentioned. And we also found support in the Talmud. Uh, they accused Jesus of sorcery. So we had that support too. And there's some other support where people had noticed that there were some sort of miracles or sorcery or magic that Jesus had performed outside of the Bible. These are not the Bible authors. So now before by on a dance or anybody else can deny what you just said, because again, denialism is just people just rejecting reality because, you know, it makes them uncomfortable or whatever with the truth. Um, they would have to be able to show you another person in history named Jesus, okay, that did all of the things that you just got finished reading. And if she can't do that, then she has no way to reject the things that you just got finished saying. If she chooses, if, if, if she chooses to just reject it for the sake of rejecting it, that's not atheism. At that point, you're just, you're just a denialist at this point, And you're just rejecting reality because you didn't like, you know, the pony, you didn't like the fact that you asked God for a pony and he, and he didn't give it to you when you wanted it. You know, well, I, you know, I don't know why she and I don't know if, if she is a mythicist. I'm not sure. So if she wants to tell us if she's a mythicist, I would like to hear that. I also want to say, Andy, you're absolutely incorrect. Josephus wrote no portion of the New Testament. Josephus was Jewish. And of course, he wasn't writing the Christian New Testament. It doesn't even make sense to make that position. Uh, but let's go on. So here we go. Are you saying that someone out there thinks that the Bible itself is mythological, like nobody has one of these lying about? Just because someone wrote something down, that automatically makes it true. That okay, sounds like a straw man if I ever heard it. Does that sound like a straw man to you, G-Man? That sounds like a big straw man. You know what? Uh, uh, I have this biology book over there, and I think a human being wrote it. You think I should start rejecting everything that's in that biology book simply because somebody wrote it? Or does he think that <laughs> does he think that you and I read the Quran and say that because the Quran is written, it must be true? Of course we don't think that. I don't read the Hindu Vedas and say because the Vedas have been written, that means they're true. We would absolutely not make that position. So that is a, a straw manning of Christianity. Big straw man on top of that. But yeah. Continue. All right. And please point me in the direction of Gotham. And the thing is, people question. Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I like answer question. Yeah. Gotham and, and Metropolis, I'm sorry, Gotham and Metropolis are the same thing. You know, it's just different names for a metropolis or New York City. So if you want to know how to get there, it's in the East Coast, it's past New Jersey, I live very close to it. You want to go to Gotham or Metropolis, it's the same city. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> I thought he was referring to Batman. This is Batman from <laughs> Gotham City. <laughs> yeah, Bat uh, Batman's from Gotham and Superman's from Metropolis. Yep. <laughs> Here we go. Jesus. What makes Jesus any different than anyone else? Nothing, actually. And frankly, it doesn't quite matter to us. See, that's the bottom line. They, they probably, number one, they don't recognize that Jesus did make a really big difference. In fact, if we go back and we look at the impact that Christianity has had on the world as far as universities, hospitals, uh, you know, higher levels of education all throughout the Western uh, places, the idea of the exaltation of the individual over the collective. So one of the things that characterizes Western societies is our high levels of individualism and property rights and other important things that have led to the, the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the idea that women's rights are equal to men, the idea that all people are created equally. Where did equality come from? Because that's certainly not something that evolution can speak to. So this idea okay. that we we consider all men equal is pretty important. But let's go back a little bit further. Jesus isn't any different than anyone else and that's how he feels. See, this is an issue of education at this point and whether or not they know anything about history. Did you, and you obviously brought up uh, you know, the, 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 the hospitals, the universities and everything uh, and all of the influences that modern day Christianity has influenced. But SJ, check this out. It was Christianity that took down the Roman empire. Okay? You're right. It was Christianity that changed the entire, as a matter of fact, come to think about it, after hearing him say that, that was kind of stupid. Considering the reason why uh, atheism is even a thing today is because a lot of them didn't like what was going on, didn't like what was going on over there in Europe, and they brought that secular nonsense over here to the United States. It changed Europe from from the bottom up, completely took took over the um the Roman Empire. It literally turned the world upside down, and only a person who doesn't know anything about history would say something like that. So I find it interesting that he would just say that Jesus was this ordinary person for crying out loud. Um, well, depending on who you're talking to and depending on what country you're living in, you know, last time I checked, when I look at history, I talk about BC and I talk about AD. That would be before Christ and AD would be after Christ or after his death or whatever. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Anno Domini. Change all of that. 
And if Jesus right. wasn't really all that special of a person, then why do we have what is it, SJ, four billion Christians walking on this planet right now? Yeah, well, I think a little over two billion, but still that's we have a significant number. So we have more Christians than any other faith right now on the planet. But also to highlight what you said, just consider the fact that Jesus had the most humble of origins. He was he was basically he give, was given the death of a slave crucified, which was completely humiliating. They did that naked, mm-hmm. they beat him up with you know some really hor- horrible whips that had bones mm-hmm. and all kinds of other fragments in them so they could char the skin right off the body. They, they gave him the most horrific kind of death. He was the son of a carpenter. He had no power uh, except for the fact that he had godly power, but he had no external materialistic power. How does a guy who's a fisherman, a tent maker, and some tax collector and fit, you know, how do they end up changing the world? <laughs> I would love to know because atheists claim they're smarter than us. I would love for them to be able to explain that. It's, yeah, it's a big deal. He was a regular, ordinary person. He was no different than anyone else. Charles Darwin changed a lot of things too. You know, he made evolution very popular, very popular in, in, in the world that we're living in right now. You know what I mean? Well, uh, and Well, I always wonder what, what's going to happen 2,000 years from now. Who's going to remember Charles Darwin? Nobody. <laughs> so, you know, I, I mean, I have a feeling there will be enough. In fact, even at the Royal Society in a recent conference, I think it was 2016 or 2017, they actually said they needed a replacement for the theory of evolution because they have found some flaws in that theory. And so they're trying to come up with a new theory. So Darwin might be at the wayside. His, his opinions might be considered not very valid if we go 2000 years from now. I mean, for crying out loud, the man didn't even understand the cell. He didn't understand a lot of things when he came up with his theory. You know, and as a matter of fact, a lot yeah, of people are quite disrespectful towards him too, considering his 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 knowledge. They reject some of the things that he says and, and try to change things several times regarding their theory. So, you know, Constantine, mm-hmm. I, I see Lavender Lady is bringing up Constantine. I'm really glad she did that because I want to point something out. Until the year 313, Christians had no legal protections, and Constantine said he saw a Christian symbol in the sky. Uh, he was told to use that symbol as he led into a war and became the Roman Empire. Uh, emperor because of that symbol, which was a Christian symbol. And he ended up legalizing Christianity, giving Christians all kinds of rights. And after Constantine, we went from between five and six million Christians to about 50 million Christians by 350 AD, which is pretty significant. That's right. So let's continue with more of these uh, denialist claims that they're making. All right, here we go. Oops, what's that? If you could just share and play nicely with the other kids, it wouldn't be a problem. Hey, that's my line. Ah, that's okay. You can use it. We're only talking about Jeebus because you're bringing him up. If you'd just shut up, we'd probably have nothing to say on the stupid matter. Believe what you like. As long as it doesn't screw up my day, who cares what you believe? Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Yeah. Now, now, Bionic Dance, I want to say this directly to you because me and you just had a conversation about this about a year ago or whatever in the geek room. And I think we also did this on a non sequitur show, if I'm not mistaken. Let me get this straight. As long as it doesn't affect your personal life, you won't say nothing about it. Tell me something, Bionic Dance. I know about your lifestyle. Does your lifestyle Okay, are there a lot of people out there practicing your lifestyle that's affecting my personal life? The answer is yes, because if we don't make a cake for you, or we don't serve you, or we don't uh, 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 bow down to you guys and almost practice what you guys um, uh, uh, practice and, and accept what you guys do, then I'm just supposed to be quiet about it. But if we say something that you disagree that, that you disagree with, you think that you're justified to, to, to be disrespectful about our faith and i'm sorry I, I i don't understand how that works you know yeah well i do i you know what i found recently that i find is is rather um frustrating is, is i don't like it when people try to uh indoctrinate our children with with these different beliefs and so i just saw this video where there was a guy who was dancing around uh half naked in front of a little kid and everybody was cheering him on um and so i i thought to myself now actually uh, yeah, it's, it was just one of those videos where I thought, you know, let's make sure that we don't uh, like add too much sex ed and that kind of stuff into the schools. And I think not to say this, this is bionic dance at all. This is not her position. I'm just trying to say that that some of the things that I'm seeing right now where, where people are coming in who are secular and they're saying, okay, now let's change sex education in the grade schools. And so what they've done now is they're not only just mentioning the basic sex between a man and a woman, they're mentioning things like using cucumbers and zucchinis and get bananas and all kinds of crazy stuff. And they're bringing this into the California schools and parents are not allowed to opt out of it, which I think right. is a, a huge, one, it's terrible. That's got huge implications when little kids are getting those kind of messages. Right. So let's continue. 
Uh, yes, you can tell me Bionic Dance wants to tell her her position. So I, I'm actually not sure what your position is, Bionic Dance, because I really don't know you very well. So, um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to watch the chat as we play Mr. She's Powers. Here. Link. I mean, I have no problem with her coming in here and talking, you know, so, defending this. Oh, do you want to come in here, Bionic Dance? You want to explain your position? You're you know, more than welcome. I'll watch the chat to see if you say yes. If you say yes, uh, email me, Bionic Dance. If you say yes, then go ahead and email me at alwayslearning1225 and I will write at gmail.com and I will what write What is your email, SJ? What is your email, SJ? Alwayslearning1225. Are you sure you're a Christian? Because, you know, we Christians don't like learning, you know, according <laughs> to the I like huh? learning. The more I learn, the stronger my faith gets. That's the amazing part about it. <laughs> oh, Bionic Dance does. Okay, so... Uh, can you hold on one second? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom over. Bionic Dance, quickly email me and I will be over there. We're going to go ahead and listen to this and I'll be there with in just a second. All right. Submit to you today. Yes, submit to me, puny mortal. Or you could submit to the immutable cosmic French press who brewed everything, including you, Kelly, into existence. That there are some very good reasons why you should believe in Jesus Christ. Oh, but are they reasons we haven't heard before a thousand times over and over? Like that song they won't stop playing on the radio. Or is it the same old crapola? Toss. I get the idea that Bionic Dance does not like Christians. <laughs> do you, you kind of yeah. get that idea? Yeah, and, and, and they want to hear something brand spanking new, I guess, you know, because they've heard everything. That's why yeah. she's stronger for atheism. You so, know, so, but if I ask Bionic Dance what's going on over there on Mars, she's going to tell me she doesn't know what the heck is going on over there because, you know, she, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask her to prove it. So since, since she doesn't know what's going on on Mars, the first thing I'm going to ask her is, is how, how do you know God isn't there? Come and think about it. How do you know God isn't in my house? <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, can she, prove, can she prove that God isn't in your house? Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, dang, I'm trying to get my, uh, I can't wait to see here so I can send this to Bionic Dance. Intelligent design is going to smack her in the butt one day and she's going to be like, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. G-Man, do a little song there. I, can't, I don't see the Bionic Dance has victory. emailed me yet. Mm -mm. I want Bionic Dance to be my sister in Christ. Yes, Jesus, Jesus. Can you imagine her being in these rooms using her animation for Christ? Oh, Lord. Yeah, we want you, Bionic Dance. We, we, we're ready for you to come on over at our side. That's right. Get on the winning side. Get, off, get away from the losers. She's like, what? Right <laughs> I don't see that she's emailing me yet, so I don't know if she's gotten my email. Uh, maybe she's she, she... up. Oh, I got her email. Okay, hold on. Now I got to figure out how to do the paste into this one. Hold on. Wait a minute. I could have emailed her. I think I got her email address. I think I do. I, it's been a while, but I think I have it. Let me see if I can somehow figure out here. Did I ever tell you that Bionic Dance almost won me to atheism? That's it. Really? When I, on YouTube, when I first got on YouTube, I had a private conversation with her and Griffin98527. She was asking me some questions I did not know the answer to. She was killing me. Like, like her hands was around my throat and I was about to tap out. She almost had me. This, this is the only YouTuber that can say that. The, wow. The only YouTuber. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to unscreen. I can't do, I can't seem to do it on my cell phone here. So I'm going to have to do it on this. So hold on one second. I'm just going to uns, unslip this and move over here to switch. You know what she said to me, yesterday? You know what she said to me, say? She said to me, if you can't prove it, then why do you believe it? Now you know what to say. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Okay, I got her email oh. here. Hold on. Why are you doing that? I gotta fix my green screen. This green screen is terrible. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to. There we go. Paste just sent. Okay, so she just got it. It's on its way. Cyberspace right. heading to Bionic Dance. I have to do something about this. Uh, this green screen because this is. Okay, terrible. let me go back to our screen. Sorry, Bionic. I'm gonna have to cover you up a little bit. All right. You showing too much skin anyway, so don't okay. put that there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the lighting. There's a lot of light coming behind this uh, thingy I got behind me. So. Okay, I just fixed it. So now I've got the screen. I'm coming back to it. Now, hopefully we can get through this video and she's not going to like turn this into a straw manning her or anything like that because she likes to do that sometimes. No, I don't want to straw man her. I, I do sometimes straw man people. I don't do it on purpose. Sometimes I do it and I realize kind of after the fact, I'm like, you know, I just said something. It does sound like I straw man. So I don't mean to straw man people. If I do, that's not intentional for sure. And actually, this is supposed to be done on my channel. Why am I back on your channel again? <laughs> we could do two weeks on your channel. You want to do the next two weeks on your channel? It's a joke, actually. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> you were right, though. There she is, Bionic Dance in the house. Wow, you guys were loud for a sec. I had to adjust my volume. Bionic Dance, you look you just like the photo Bionic behind G-Man. How you doing? Actually, that's a really old photo. Oh, is it? G-Man, you're going to have to update your green screen. Yeah. 
But, but I like this one though. It's kind of cool have to it. object to the thumbnail you use for this video because it's highly misrepresenting my position. I mean, it's it's got me making this really sad face and this is everything so empty, but I was totally mocking a guy who thought that atheism was an empty life and it's totally not. That's what the video was, but here you are using it to make me look like I'm so sad. I tell you what, what here's what we'll do. Bionic dance, I got, a, I got a deal for you, Kate. Mm -hmm. If you send me if you send me the picture that you would like to feature in this video for the thumbnail, I will replace that PowerPoint slide with the new picture. How about that? Okay. All right. Yeah, sure. I've no, there's no reason I want to have a sad fun. I just, I thought it was kind of a funny face you were making. So I was like, oh, I like that. That's kind of cool. She's like, it's sad. So I didn't mean to do that to to make it look like it's a bad thing. So if you want for sure. Before we go any further, Bionic, how are you feeling? I know you had surgery and everything. How are you oh, feeling? Oh yeah, no, that was like more than a year ago. I'm more than a year seizure free. It's great. Great. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Glad to hear that. Thank you. Very glad to hear that. Yeah. Let's get down to business now. You're in here because you think we're straw manning you, right? <laughs> yeah, um, we don't well, want to straw man you. Actually, yeah, you kind of are. I mean, there's a lot of things that you said that I said that I never said. Like that, I'm I'm trying to remember exactly Me? what it was. It was a yeah, you. It was a few minutes oh, okay. ago. Okay, so when? Let's get this going. When? All right. I mean, it was a few minutes ago. Um, you you mentioned something that I had said and then you reworded it your way and I'm like wow is that ever not what I said okay so tell me so, so why don't you do this for me because I'm big on evidence these days I do atheists all the time evidence is very important for me what did I say and how did I reword it well um I mean it was several minutes ago so I don't remember specifically but um well I mean for one thing okay that and this isn't what I was talking about before, but the way I look at this is not like a crime scene, the way you're putting it. And there's some prominent theist out there who's been talking about it like that because he's a former detective. But no, this is a science experiment, not a crime scene. Oh, are you talking about Jay Warner science Wallace? Experiment. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, Cold Case Christianity. Great book, everybody. Pick it up. Well, I, I didn't instrument. I mean, I mean cause, cause here's the thing. I mean, you talk about evidence, but and then you try to claim that that I don't know what evidence is, but I'm very clear when I say physical evidence, testable, falsifiable data that you could take into a laboratory. And oh, that's okay. completely different, uh, different from what you're talking about. By any chance, that's reasonable. Why would you think we need physical evidence for a metaphysical being? Because you claim to know of its existence and there's no way you could know about it and not know that it wasn't your own delusion unless you had data that was outside of your own head, unless you could point to something physical. All you're doing is blowing smoke out your butt. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask, and I'll, Jean, and I'll go right to you. I just want to ask her a question. I want to, because I want to see if you're kind of similar to Matt Dillahunty in a way. If we saw that if Jesus wrote up in the sky in three different languages, Bionic Dance, I am here, this is Jesus, and I love you, would that be enough? Probably not. Um, I would need to see something a little more spectacular. And even then, how do I know I'm not being punked some other way? I mean, let's suppose that uh, Thor actually existed and decide to play a prank and wrote that up in the sky and clouds. He is the thunder god after all. So maybe he can manipulate clouds just to mess with me. I don't know. All I know is that there's some sky writing out there. Now, if there was a cloud that had like God's bearded face and it looked animated and it was talking to us in real time, right about then I might be a little suspicious that perhaps I've been wrong, but it seems pretty unlikely. I mean, that's one of my biggest objections to all religions, not just Christianity, is that they make claims that essentially amount to magic or sorcery, even though a lot of them don't like it being described that way. Uh, and yet we see none of it in real life. We don't have any of this magic to look at and say, aha, there's something supernatural. It's like everything dried up the instant the camera was invented. Just let me know when it's my turn, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, G-Man. So I just okay, finished. Uh, okay, Bionic Dance, you're talking about straw man. Number one, and I've said this to the atheist community several times, and I'm saying this to you, okay? And I'm trying to be respectful with this, okay? You need to go learn the difference between power and magic. Magic deals with See, illusion. I told you. Go I told you. Ken I know Gillette, you he will tell you that magic is an illusion. I knew it. Okay, so... So here's the thing now, uh, Bionic Dance, listen, okay? Now, let me get this straight. If you don't have something physically in your hand where you can scientifically test it, then that means you don't believe it then, do you? Well, it means I'm pretty unlikely to do so. It means, but, but here's the thing. 
people are making claims. I'm not just going, eh, that's not real. That's not real. That's not real. If someone said is that a God exists, I'm going to ask them how they know it. I'm going to ask them how they can convince me of it. And if their standards include anything like faith, well, I'm an apistivist. We don't use faith to come to conclusions. I am going to need that falsifiable data. And they never provide it. They never provide it. Okay. So I'm going to need about a minute without being interrupted here. I know that you're an epistivist and I know that Aaron Raw is an epistivist, but here's the thing, Bionic Dance. Like you, I also don't necessarily believe a claim without actually seeing proof as well. I don't believe that you're an epistivist and I believe that you take things on faith as well. And I'll prove it right now. Uh, I know that you're pretty good at science because one of the, the very first video response you ever made about me was about evolution when I didn't know Jack Squad Bitly about it. You got me on the whole boom thingy and you can write a, you can write a piece, you can write a piece of paper you know, eat it and poop out a better explanation of what evolution. I remember all of that bionic dance. This is 2020 and this is a different day here now, okay? Tell me something. What you know about the origin of life? And how do you know that, and how do you know that abiogenesis is true? Well, I don't, but I do know that biogenesis has no data either. But, but we do have more evidence that abiogenesis is possible than we do for poof, now there's life, like God style. I appreciate your honesty. Uh, the problem with you being an epistivist, though, uh, Bionic mm-hmm. Dance, is that you're taking a, a-, a- biogenesis on faith. You're not um, taking- no, 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 no. That's exactly what I didn't say. I said that we don't know. I'm not done yet, Bionic, I, Dance. No, Bionic I, Dance. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Out of me, dude. I'm going to tell you why it's faith. Because oh. you can scientifically, hold on a minute. You can't scientifically prove that there was this complex chemical uh, ocean where lightning I'm done saying I don't know that it's true, but we have more evidence for that than we do do for creation. So what I'm saying is while, while any conclusion I might reach is tentative and vulnerable to new evidence that might change my mind, I'm right now looking at that for which we have the most evidence and leaning towards being persuaded about that rather than creationism. I'm not making these definitive, this is what's so statements. And if you try to say that I am, you're straw manning me, so knock it off. I'm not straw manning you. And I'm gonna prove- Let me ask. And I'm gonna prove to you, but please, actually, just one more, just one more. Oh, I'm, yeah. gonna prove to you, I'm gonna prove to you by advance that you actually do think that there's more evidence for creation than there is for abiogenesis. Okay, I'm gonna go for right it. Now, okay, does life, co- do, do we see more evidence for life coming from life? Or do we see more evidence from life coming from non-life? We see at what, what does more have to do with it? Can you please just answer the question? What does more have to do with it? Can you answer the question, please. What does more have you to said, do with it? I'll, 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 I'll answer it again, okay? The reason, why I, the reason why I said more is because you said that we have more evidence to support the idea of abiogenesis, life coming from non-life. I believe that we have more evidence more evidence to support the idea that life comes from life. And if there's more evidence to support that life comes from life, then, then you, have to, you have to lean towards creation and not a biogenesis. No, I Answer don't. And I'm not sure if you even know the difference between life coming from life and a biogenesis. I'm not sure you know the difference at all. I would love to have a conversation with you about that if that shade doesn't okay, mind. I know see, the here's difference. the thing. We know that life comes from life in terms of reproduction. But none of that has to do with how life got started in the first place. You see, Again. so, so when, when you start saying, do we have more evidence that life comes from life or um, you know, life coming from non-life and all that stuff, it's not the point because we're not talking about uh, life perpetuating itself, which it does with reproduction. What we're talking about is the origin of life. And if you wanna talk about the origin of life, the question is not, does life come from life, life come from non-life? The question is, how did life get started? Was it a magical poof God event or did chemicals combine to form proteins and then slowly mutate over billions, millions of years, all of that um, into life that we know now? And it's, they're, they're just, you're, you're mixing up two different topics. You're engaging in category errors and acting like there's some sort of slam dunk against a biogenesis. Uh, not, only is, not only is it a slam dunk, but again, what I see every single day, you're right. I see reproduction every single day. I see life producing <sighs> life. I have never once in my life, hold on a minute, because we're going back to this epistemist claim, okay? Whether or not you take anything on faith. 
I have never once ever in my life seen life come from non-life. I've never seen it. And I doubt you. And I, I don't think you ever seen it either. Now, the question is, is why do we accept it? Because a scientist said it. Well, you want to know well, what? If I you can accept that, that. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on a minute. If you can do that, then, then I can say it's probably pretty probable that my mother gave birth to me and her mother gave birth to her and her grandmother and her mother gave birth to her. And we can go on and on and on and on and on. We have evidence for that. You can actually see that. Okay? Yeah, but what here's we the problem. Don't see no, no, you got a problem. All right, keep going, but you're starting from a fault. I'm not strawmanning you. I'm telling you that you got more faith than I do because you can't yeah. prove that life. Okay, so let me, let me interject here for you a second. You did strawman me earlier when you said that I believe it just because a scientist said it. That's all kinds of not true. Well, let me let me interject here because I think I, I think we have some mutual agreement. You guys actually pointed out some things that we do have an agreement. So all of us agree that we came from our parents and our parents came from their parents and so on and so on. And so we have in, uh, a regression that goes backwards in events. And so if we go back far enough with life, uh, beginning life, beginning life, beginning life, at some point we're going to get to where we have to have a beginning. And we know that the universe has a beginning of about 13, well, we, we could differ on the years, but some would say 6,000 years, I would say actually 13.8 billion years. But we know that if the universe has a beginning, then something had to come uh, at, at some point, there has to be an unmoved mover or the buck stops mm, here. You know, there you has to be a point. On me. Well, if we, know that, if we know that time, space and matter have a start date, then we know that what came before time, space, and matter had to be immaterial, timeless, and uh, that's and, um, nonsensical. Nothing comes before time because you need time to have a before. Well, that's the point. So, at thirteen point eight billion years ago, when the universe began, what came before that? Well, what does it mean that the universe even began? What exactly are you picturing when you talk about the universe beginning? Okay, so I'm, I'm positing that there was an inflation uh, that occurred about 13.8 billion years ago, and it's been, uh, it's been documented by the Big Bang theorists uh, around 1925 by Len Mater, who is actually a Catholic. And, uh, and so a Christian came up with this idea of the Big Bang Theory, which Einstein decided to support because it fit in with his theory of relativity. And so we have this beginning of time, space, and matter. Now, Stephen Hawking says that time prior to that was what he called imaginary time because Wait it wasn't within our linear time that we know. Wait a minute. Now you say the beginning of time, space, and matter. We know that it was the beginning of time, but you described the Big Bang as an inflation, I would say expansion, but close enough. And, um, but what expanded? Well, that was the matter and energy in that singularity that would have expanded. And because, exactly. um, and because all of that was so compressed, time couldn't function. But the matter and energy was still there, as far as we know. I mean, that's the thing is when people try to claim what came before the Big Bang, they, they have no evidence for their claims. Not even scientists do. And so you can't really take those claims seriously because there's nothing to back them. Well, so uh, exactly. So we know, but we do have a point where that there's something consistent with the Bible, because the Bible, unlike some other religious texts, especially unlike, say, the Hindu text, that feels like there's a recycle, a constant recycling of the universe. One of the things about the Bible that distinguishes it is the words in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. And so that that distinguishes the Bible from other faiths. Well, so, I mean, people can say stuff that doesn't mean it's true. OK, so how do we know if something is true then? Well, I mean, that's a point I was going to touch on earlier is you were talking, G-Man, about uh, like, like, again, the whole I believe it because a scientist said it. But but the problem is that you don't seem to know how science works when it comes to, um, if not actually proving something, at least showing with enough confidence that it's true that we might as well treat it as so. And that gets into things like double blind testing, even triple blind testing, where people are not invested in something being true and thus can be as objective as any person can be, will test what the, the person putting forward the proposition has said. And in doing so, uh, we then get a certain amount of verification from, again, like I said, as um, objective sources as we possibly can, as far as uh, people having opinions about it or not. Uh, and so if I wanted to, I could take any scientific paper and test what's said in it. I could go out and perform the same exact experiment as that scientist and either prove or falsify their claim. But I can't do it's that with a religious text, you see. So I'm not, I'm not believing it on faith. 
I, I have I the ability to check that scientist's work. I can do the same thing with Christianity. Oh, how? Okay, let's use the Ten Commandments, for example. Can you find me one human being on the planet? Just one. That's never broke one of them. Just one. What, the commandments? And by the way, not only did they not break them, check this out, you're gonna love this. Prove that they're not living a lifestyle of breaking them. Just one what person. Is, what does this have anything to do with you anything? can falsify, you can, fall, you can immediately destroy Christianity by proving that a, a human being is, is sinless and doesn't need Jesus Christ. The fastest way you can do that is by proving that you can name okay. one person that has never broke one of those 10 their entire life. And I'm talking about no baby. I'm talking about somebody from one to like 21 or something like that, where they never once broke wait, any wait, of them. Wait a minute. There are so many things wrong with this. So many What's things. What's wrong with it? Okay. Um, and I'll take these sort of in reverse order because it's easier. Um, number one, allegedly babies are born with uh, original sin. So it wouldn't matter if they're a baby or not. Uh, number two, all right, you're telling me that I have to prove Christianity is false, that that nobody's broken the Ten Commandments. That's not what I'm saying. You're storming me. Well, that, that there's what you said was find me one person who is sinless and doesn't. That need in to response to what you did, did you that, that? you can do with science, if you can take a paper and you can test what's on the I, paper. This okay, course, hold on. Right what? now, I'm just trying to make sure I have what you said right, so I'm addressing the right thing. Okay, good. You, you did say that I needed to find one person who is sinless and doesn't need Jesus, right? Right. You okay, but the here's the problem. But here's the problem with that. I don't know or even think that sin exists. I don't think that even if there was a historical Jesus, he was a magical man. I don't think he was the son of God. And if you're going to say that he was, if you're going to say that sin exists as it's described in the Bible, you're going to have to prove that to me. Okay, so let me explain why I said what I said in context without all of the word salad that was that, that was just going on here, all right? Nice. You just got finished making a statement saying, saying that the reason why you know that something is scientifically true is because you got papers and you can actually test what's written on the papers to see whether or not those things are true. That's that's what you said in the nutshell. And no, I'm not sure manning you by saying that. No, what now, I said Bible, was that I could do Okay, that. now the Bible makes claims too. One of the mm -hmm. claims that the Bible says is that we have all sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God, every last one of us, okay? Mm -hmm. All you got to do is show me somebody who has not sinned according to the words of this book, meaning you haven't stolen anything, you haven't committed adultery, you haven't lusted, you mm -hmm. haven't practiced LGBTQ or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. If you can find, hold on a minute, by this, listen, because you're not you're not getting this, okay? No, I'm getting it. You're just starting to Actually, from the faulty position. That God is a liar. Hold on a minute. You can prove that the testimony of scripture is, 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 is me and me actually will stop believing right now if you can prove that sin okay. is a thing and that but you can you show have me to prove that it is. Anything. You have to show that sin is a thing. Oh, I can do that. I can do I mean, that, but you I mean, might get feel by start doing that. So if I'm, I'm neither not of you two ever claimed that, uh, like, if if you never claimed that sin existed, if no Christian, no religious person ever claimed sin existed, I would go through my entire life not even considering the matter, at least not in any religious sense. I might look at my own behavior and say, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. But no part of me is going to think, oops, I've sinned against God or like, like rejected his word or anything because no one brought up the topic. But now here are religious people saying that sin is real and not proving it. And now you're expecting me to disprove something that I don't think is real in the first place because you haven't given me evidence for its existence. So basically what you're saying is that that the the burden of proof is reversed onto me and it shouldn't be so let me let me talk about this a little bit because i think i think we here's the idea so in our holy book it says that we all sin it says we all fall short of the glory of god and so that's something that we just feel is innate and like you mentioned we do have a sinful nature all humans are subject to that there's no one who's been on this planet except for jesus who's been sin free he's the only one who is able to uh, release us from our sins however what i want to say also is um Hey, wait, G-Man, did he just get knocked off? He does see seem to be gone, yes. Oh, shoot, G-Man, he's calling me. Hold on one sec. Hello? Okay, he'll be right back. Okay. Okay, all right, thanks. Okay, his computer did something. 
Um, okay, so uh, so then I, I want to say though we do have something that's kind of cool that I don't know if you've you've talked about or you thought about in some of your videos because I'm not as familiar with your videos. But some argument, one of the things that you mentioned is you mentioned a lot of science being really important, but there are also other issues that could be important in speaking to whether God exists, and that could be looking at things like philosophical arguments. And so I'm wondering if you've done any investigation of moral argument for God. I mean, I have, but I've never found an argument that requires God. Like like a a anything in my life that has anything to do with morality, God is a non-issue. I don't need God to behave in a way that's moral. The problem is that, and this is something I've, I've noticed, I've never heard a, a theist say it, but what I've noticed is when they talk about morality, especially objective morality, what it sounds like is they need some sort of cosmic rule book that definitively lays out what is and isn't okay so that nobody ever has to improvise. So nobody uh, ever ends up in an ambiguous situation. And I don't think morality works like that. So when someone makes a moral argument for God, well, it, they, they still have to prove that God is real because these moral arguments sound like human constructs. So, so let me, uh, one of the reasons that Tom Holland recently decided to come to Christianity, and that's sort of unknown, it's not out in public yet that he did come to Christianity, but he spent many years in the agnostic, and he did a lot of studying of the changes from the Roman Empire that Christianity brought. And so one of the things is, of course, stopping with the gladiators, it was stopping slavery. Uh, of course, I know later in history, Christians did the wrong thing around slavery and that those who had initiated or supported it out of Africa for the United States. But, but in the early history, we had this idea where humans were really devalued valued, especially female humans. So if you were a female baby, it was very likely you'd be left out on the street to be exposed if you were born because you were not valued as much as male babies. And, uh, and that sort of uh, non non treatment, you know, poor treatment of human life was something that was quite prevalent then. And so what we're seeing now is we're seeing the the uh, fruitions of what Jesus brought and this idea that humans as individuals, all humans are to be valued equally. And we see that now in our Declaration of Independence. We also see it in the United Nations. And it's this idea that we've uh, sort of been guided towards this objective moral standards of doing what's right for our fellow humans. So we've got this idea across all religions and even atheism and humanism of following the golden rule. We have this idea that we want to do what's right and preserve life and liberty and justice and all those kind of good things. And so I would make an argument that a lot of that comes from Christianity because where we're seeing the fruits of that are in the Western nations that have been built on Christian foundations. But did we need Christianity to get there? Well, I would think if we compared ourselves to China or India, I think we can make a pretty good case that Christianity has played a major role in that. I didn't ask if it played a major role. I asked if it was required. I would say, yeah, it probably is required. Well, I, I wouldn't, honestly. Um, I think all we need is empathy. I think empathy is very important. I agree with you on that. And so well, but I, that's I think the thing is, I mean, I, I listen to the claims people make about this, that or the other thing that God has done, especially when it comes to things like morality. And it seems to me that God is superfluous to the equation. See, I would say if, if you look at even survival of the fittest or the most adaptive and the idea that people have this natural innate sense to wanna to be selfish, uh, you see that played out with babies all the time. And I think we're conditioned to be more helpful and, and uh, selfless. I think that God plays a direct role in that. I think he's a good explanation for why we even see empathy in humans. Why? But I mean, I ask again, why is God required for that? You may say it's the best explanation. I can think of other explanations. Uh, and in fact, survival of the fittest is not necessarily about the survival of the individual or even improvement, because there are like insects, for example, that lost their wings because they didn't need them. It wasn't advantageous to their survival. I would argue that because humans are a communal species, that we tend to gather in groups, that working together for our mutual survival is a factor in things like uh, survival of the fittest, natural selection, all of that. Uh, but we don't need God for it. I mean, if, if God was not involved in any way, shape, or form, I'd say we would end up on the same path. And, and I would actually argue against that. So I would say that one of the reasons why we see the golden rule, that's something that's within our conscience uh, all throughout societies, and even including in the societies where I said Christianity is not present, I think that that God plays a, is a good explanation for that. And I, I want to say that I don't believe that science and Christianity are at odds at all. So I think that God sort of planted the, the deck, if you want to okay, say, but, stack but the deck. Here's my, my question then, is why should someone else think 
that God played any role whatsoever. I mean, even if I were to ignore my objections to God's existence in the first place, right? Uh, e even if I were to grant you maybe a God does or doesn't exist and I'll lose my, my doubt, um, my skeptical nature, why should I think that the Christian God interfered in any way? I can answer that. Huh? He's All back. Right. Because without God, you can't make sense out of your worldview. You can't what tell is me my world is right or wrong. You can't tell me anything is good or evil. You Why can't not? do none of that. Why not? Well, for starters, in order for you to say, if I started cussing in here in front of children, in order hmm. for you as an atheist to say that's wrong, you have to appeal to my worldview where where it shows that, that you're supposed to be an example of children. Your worldview doesn't have any objective moral standards to be able to say it doesn't have to have an objective. whether or not something is right or wrong or not. It doesn't have to have an objective moral standard. I don't right. need it to be objectively wrong, quote unquote, to start swearing in front of children. I can I can look at the effect swearing in front of children might have on those children and decide whether it's desirable or undesirable. There we go, subjective morality, atheist, that's all you need. Now granted, like I say, that's messy and it means we're all playing improv and it means that what we might think is other examples. someone else might uh, object, disagree, have whatever. Other examples. What, have what other are, examples. Because you, you're, you're examples? jumping like you won something or something. Uh, no, if I'm I started not murdering, if I started taking away all the civil mean? rights, hold on a minute. If I started, if I started going outside and shooting everybody I saw outside that was LGBTQ, is that right or is that wrong objectively? I would not say it's objectively anything except for you putting hot lead into other people. That's the only objective part of this whatsoever. Okay, so let me get this straight. You would not say that it's objectively wrong, but it would be subjectively wrong for, for, for me yes. to drop into it. So it's according Absolutely. to your opinion then. Well, guess what? According well, to my opinion, it's an opinion. So hold on a minute. According to my opinion, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think I should be able to pick up rocks, take them to the edge of the city and stone them to death. And you should uh -huh. have no problem with it. Because guess Why would what? I have no problem You're with not it? right and wrong about nothing. And I'm not I right or wrong have about no nothing. problem with it. Of course I'd have a but problem. But I know inside of you, you believe uh, you don't that, know it, anything that it is wrong. Me. Hold on a minute. You you I know better wrong. than you what's inside of me. I believe that you think that it is wrong to kill LGBT people for the sake of killing LGBT people. You know what? it is wrong. You want them thrown in jail. You want them Why do I think it's wrong, though? You think that is wrong because it's a crime. No, 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 no. That's just saying the same thing in two different ways. Why would I think it should be a you crime? Why would crime. I describe it as wrong? Do you know? Because of your own personal opinion, because you ain't got no, there you ain't got you no go. moral basis. Right? Because I, speaking as a lesbian, would rather not be killed, tortured, or anything right. else. Of course, right. it's called empathy. That's right, all I right. need. Now, right. Now, you asked a question earlier, why do we need God and why do you need to believe in him and whatnot, right? Um, no, everybody no, no, operated, no, 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 hold on no, a minute, no, Bionic no, Dance, hold on a Bionic Dance. That's not what I asked. Do you want to everybody, a hold on a minute, Bionic Dance. You want straw man everybody, me. I'm not straw manning you. If, Guys, yeah, try yeah. To, let's see if we can each take take maybe a minute to do your positions so each of you can. Thank you, Ashay. So if everybody had your attitude, well, we just acted according, according to our own, uh, our own opinion, humanity wouldn't last very long. Why so not? For, so for the people that are watching this, this is the reason why objective moral values exist. We have good and we have evil. We have right and we have wrong. That is why it exists. And we have definitive, we have definites on right and wrong. We know that rape is 100% wrong. You, if you force yourself on another woman, that is not half wrong. It is not partly wrong. It is 100% wrong. And you want to know why the rapist knows it's wrong? Because they will attempt to hide their actions. They won't go out in broad daylight telling everybody what, what is it they try. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. They won't go out there and try to tell everybody what they did for fear of um, being persecuted for what they did because they know that it was wrong. Do they, though, necessarily? Yes, they I, I would say that they hide their actions because they know that the consequences will be undesirable to them. They may think that rape is perfectly good, that they are allowed to do whatever the heck they like, but the rest of humanity disagrees, and so they have to hide. They, they, you, you are not making a good argument for they know it's wrong uh, because you don't know what's in their head, and you don't know what's in my head either. And when you try to claim to, you're just making yourself look silly and you shouldn't do it. Okay, I'm not so going to try to claim I know what's in your head when you believe in God. In fact, right, I right, often right. wonder what it must but be like when people claim, say- Wait, 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 Jimmy, I'll let her finish. Say, right. People say that they feel the Holy Spirit or whatever, they, they feel the presence of God within them. Well, I sometimes wonder what that feels like because there have been times when I've like, what, usually when I was a kid, I would have watched a really cool movie 
like something like ET or whatever. And I used to think, oh gosh, what if aliens were real? What if magic was real? What if I could do all these really cool things? And I would have this sort of like goosebumps raising feeling that felt like the world could be a much cooler place than it is. Um, mind you, I got most of this from movies. Um, but I have to wonder if that feeling of the world could be so magical, just like in the movies, is anything like what religious people feel when they say they feel the presence of God. And I, I mean, I don't know that. And I'm not going to say that's what they're feeling when they feel the presence of God. I'm going to say I suspect it. So when you say that you know what's in my head or you know what's in my heart or whatever it is you're going to say, you're just talking crap, dude. You, you okay. got to say, I think that you think this or ask me what I think. But telling me what I think, that's a paddling. Oh, God, the fun I'm going to have. Okay, so whenever you make your subjective opinion about something, including in this video here, which you didn't do at all, you need to sort of your sentences and not be a hypocrite and say that if, according to my opinion, according to my opinion, I don't believe that God exists. Kids, in my opinion, God don't exist. No, you don't say that, Bionna Dance. You say that God doesn't exist. Yeah, Actually, you provide a I'm Wait a minute. I'm not done yet. I'm not done. I'm not done. All right. Secondly, Bionic Dance, you say, I don't know what's going on in your head. When you, for example, say things like you're an epistemist, like you, when you and Arnold Ross mm -hmm. say this, what I love, when I love you guys telling me that you're epistemist, because that tells me that you're not going to accept anything on faith. That's right. Let me read something to you here, real quick, in the Bible here, real quick, by Bionic Dance. Oh, please I don't. Point, before I make my point. No, I'm go. See, and now when I say what I'm going to say in a minute, don't get mad, okay? Mm. 11. Hold on a minute, Bionic Dance. You got it. I said all right. Just play read nice, it. Play nice with the other kids now. Come on. It says in Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There are other passages in the scripture that talks about how we can know that he's real by faith. You block that off when you immediately say that you're an epistemist. So uh -huh. there are ways that you, hold on a minute. There are ways that you can know that he's I real and that he exists and that you can experience him. But because you claim to be an epistemist and you refuse to believe on, in, on anything uh, by faith, what you actually do by on advance is that you're suppressing information. And no, I know I that's don't. going on in your head because the no. entire epistemist argument is meant to attack the idea of believing in God by faith. No, I it's not. I've been dealing with you for a while. I know that's why you did it. Oh, merciful Zeus. Okay, you're, you're merciful wrong. Merciful God, Zeus so isn't real. Rebels. Zeus is the devil. So many yeah, okay, um, dude, I took Merciful Zeus from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Xander said it once and I thought it was funny. Don't take it too far. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, I mean, you straw man the hell out of me left and right. Because number one, you don't understand epistemism, all right? Um, I say that I won't take anything on faith because I want data instead, because data can be checked in ways faith cannot. So faith is not necessarily information. In fact, I'd go so far as to say faith is closer to imagination than anything else. So when so so when you um, tried What's to characterize of faith? epistemism as uh, refusing to accept anything from the Bible, no. If the Bible You're presented if the Bible faith. presented us with hard data, with lab testable data, with tangible data, Daniel, um, with nothing, with Jesus, nothing that is less exodus. than say UV rays or X rays or something, then we start my uh, we might Have start getting Bible? into the the path. Have you read the Bible, uh, dude? Have you read the Bible? Then we might get into a path where we can start uh, actually investigating God's existence. But until you make faith a non factor. I'm never going to be on board. Okay, so there's a lot of problems with what you just said. Number one, Bionic Dance, we both know you've never read the Bible before. And if you haven't read it, we know you haven't studied it. And you haven't investigated any of the claims. The videos that you have on YouTube, hold on a minute, Bible. Bionic Dance. The videos Bible. that you have on YouTube, Bionic Dance, which I can easily go to, showing people that you are reading the Bible, it doesn't even look like you got a third grade reading a level. Uh, 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 and I'll show you what I mean one day, Ashe, oh. when you see you're actually reading it. She well, doesn't let me, even pronounce the words. No, I want to ask. I, I want to ask Bionic Dance's positions here because I want to. I want to exactly. I have one question of, for her though. Uh, by, uh, yeah. Ashley. What is the definition of faith, Bionic Dance? Since it's imagination. Well, see here. Here's here's the thing though. There are multiple definitions of most words, and when people talk about faith, they may not necessarily be talking about the same thing. So if I were to say I have faith in my friends, what I mean is that I have long experience with them. I have ideas of how they're going to behave. 
And so I can reasonably say that I have faith in what they're going to do next. But, but when it comes to the existence of a God, I don't have that kind of data. So if I were to say I had faith in God's existence, what I would mean is that I'm saying, oh, well, I believe it either in spite of or despite the, the absence of evidence, I still believe it anyway. That's What's the definition of Christian faith? Well, it would be that, that second one right there. It would definitely not be the first. Because can you tell me, wanted, can you give me a theologian? The can you give me a theologian or a pastor? Can you uh, if it was the first definition of faith that was being used for God, then um, you'd be able to show the same kind of data I could show for having faith in my friends. Can you show me a theologian, a pastor, because I'm sure you have investigated this stuff. Can, can mm. you show me a theologian or a pastor, perhaps a church father or anybody like that? I believe there's another Christian on YouTube. This thing is inspiring philosophy. I had a debate with this guy by the name of Aaron Raw that talked to him about pistols. I think, it, I think it is. Can you do me a favor and do me a favor? Give me somebody in our church that uses blind faith as our definition for faith. Does anybody? I, to, be, to be perfectly honest, um, there's a difference between what you say is the definition of faith and what I see you doing. So that, that dichotomy there is a problem. What you see me you doing. You can define yes. faith however you like, but when I watch what religious people do when they say they have faith, completely different from the definition they give. I'm going to say one more thing and I'm going to shut up because I know SJ wants to talk and she wants me to. Right. So I'm going to say this here for you. Let me tell you what I do with my faith. That's a, 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 a bionic dance. My Bible tells me that God is always with me and that he'll supernaturally protect me. So you know what I do with that information? Bionic dance. I go outside. I got a bullhorn. I preach the gospel and I do it in heavily Muslim areas. I don't know if you ever see my Hebrew words white videos. You should check them out. Sometimes 40 of them and 60 of them by myself, the very violent people. That's and I hilarious. go out there and preach the gospel with those people. Okay. And I believe nothing's going to happen to me. And guess what? Mm -hmm. To this very day, nothing's happened to me because yeah, I have been I supernaturally protected. So again, uh -huh. I, your definition of faith does not match what I practice. My you faith is backed by evidence. I'm sorry, but you don't know what you're talking about, by any Except that, actually, I do. But here's the problem, though. How do you know that it's not just I'm them training themselves, it. number one? But number two, okay, I have a challenge for you. If you have that much faith, if you think you're supernaturally protected, throw yourself off a building and pray for God to catch you. Wait a minute, that's in the Bible. Wait a minute, isn't that in the Gospels? If you're the son of God, jump off this mountain. And the Bible says that the angels are, and what did Jesus say? Thou shall not put the Lord your God to the test, I think. Ah, uh, see, I there's a the couple that. of so, so, but, 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 but wait a minute, that's what Satan said. I need said. to be able to now, you suggested the same thing that Satan wanted me to do. Okay, that's what I'm telling. <laughs> okay, well, I, first of all, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Satan. So saying that kind of I'm thing. I'm not mad at you, by You don't know the better part about it. But again, I need to be able to put God to the test. The fact that you can't or won't put God to the test is why you're using faith. Confess his name. That, and the leave fact your heart that God I rose won't the accept it on faith because I need to be able to test God. That shows that I don't have Confess it. the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God rose up from the dead. Don't play around. <sighs> don't mock him. And believe in your heart that God rose up from the dead and you shall be saved. Okay. That's all the testing you need to there's do. there's anything for me to be saved from. Oh, please. My other dance, don't even play with me. Like, we know that you're a lot that you lie. Well, a lot we of it, a lot of it. Absolutely. You guys, you guys are fun. A lot of it is, Go ahead. no, a lot of it is just saving us from ourselves. I mean, the big problem is our own egos. And that's what, that's what I think one of the things that God was trying to save us from. But I want to yeah. ask by dance a question that's kind of related because we were going to review your video and you can see right now, obviously we're not reviewing yeah. your video because we all got into this conversation that I figured would be more interesting because you two are more live instead of having your video. Um, but we were going to review your video on Jesus. And so what I'm curious, Bionic, is when you hear about the, the minimal facts for Jesus' resurrection, like, for example, that, that he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, that he died, that after a few days, the women went and found, him in the empty, found that he wasn't in the empty tomb, and that the apostles were in hiding at the time, and that the apostles came out of hiding to preach uh, despite being persecuted over the next few decades. I'm just mm. wondering, when you look at that, these pieces of information that even agnostics have acknowledged, what do you put together as the best explanation for that? Well, number one, I'm not even 100% certain that those things happened as described because there's a lot of evidence that the Gospels were not written by the alleged eyewitnesses, by the uh, apostles and all that, that they were written decades later. 
So given that, you know, even children can screw up a, a single word with the telephone game, I'm thinking 30 years going by and then people trying to tell the story of Jesus and his followers, the few things might have gotten a little murky. So, uh, but even if that's not the case, um, well, a lot of people have believed things really fervently that, I, I mean, we have no evidence for that either. Like, um, the, okay, there was this one dude, I don't know what was up, but he thought that he was like a resurrected Jesus or reincarnated Jesus or something. And like to prove it, he threw himself to a bunch of lions, which promptly ate him. And I have to wonder sometimes, like if he's halfway through being eaten, is he like, well, this was a mistake. But, but the point is that, that people believe a lot of really wacky stuff and will do some really wacky things to themselves or unfortunately to others to prove what they think is true. And it usually goes really badly for them. So if you ask me like, like about the, the rest of the books of the Bible after Jesus' death, I'm going to say, well, give me a reason to think they're true. Well, I want to say something. Uh, you mentioned one of the things that you just said is you said that the eyewitnesses didn't write the gospel. So here's what we know. We know this from not mm -hmm. only the gospel authors themselves, but we know that we know that all of the early church fathers, many of them attributed the gospels to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so I'm wondering what evidence you have from ancient times that attributed well, the gospels to anybody other than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, well, I'm going to have to do some Google searching for that because I don't have it memorized. Well, you but, won't find anything. I, I'll just let you know. You, you will not find any ancient mm -hmm. evidence to, to support that. They were all attributed to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's nobody else it was attributed to. Okay, but here's the thing, though, is, is you're talking, number one, that church fathers or whatever term you use are the ones who confirmed it. You know, yeah. people with a vested interest in it being true. But so, I also can say that so, if I mean, we had ancient why, skeptics why, such as and, yourself, don't you think they would have written something saying somebody else wrote it? Well, we don't have any information from any ancient skeptics. We have ancient skeptics. We've got Porphyry, for example, but we don't have anybody who's saying that nobody, somebody else authored these books. But we aren't also having somebody saying, yeah, I was totally there, even though I was not on Jesus's side. You know, we're, we're, we're not getting these extra biblical accounts of it very much, uh, and certainly none that aren't from the church itself. The best we can do, the best anyone's ever do, done is say, yeah, okay, there was a guy named Jesus and he had a bit of a fan club. That's all anyone's ever been able to find. Well, we do have, what? we have nine within 150 wow. years. So I already mentioned Josephus when we opened, but we also have Marabar Serapion, Tacitus, Tal the Talmud, Suetonius, um, and, and a lot of others. So we've got a lot of, a lot of evidence that there's some outside but, support. Pliny okay, the Younger. The other problem with that is uh, even, even if I were to accept the idea that we're looking at this like a crime scene rather than a, a science experiment, uh, in court, eyewitness testimony is treated as the weakest testimony. So I'm still going to need the hard data, the physical data that can be checked, that, that on which we can do forensics. That's the one heck of an extraordinary claim that you made. You said the eyewitness testimony is the weakest form of... And, uh, 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 look it up, dude. Okay, so, so, so let me get this straight here. <clears throat> Uh, if you saw me murder SJ right now, okay, and there was no fingerprints, none of that stuff in there, there's no DNA, nothing of that stuff in our house or whatever, and you saw me murder SJ, you're, mm. you're, you're telling me that your testimony would not be considered by the mm. jury on whether or not, um, on whether or not, um, uh, 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 uh I was guilty of murdering SJ. Hmm. Hmm. That's just me letting you know I'm listening. Okay, so you saw me kill SJ. There's no, no other evidence, no bullet, no fingerprints, none of that stuff. But mm. you saw me kill her. You testify against me, and you say that I saw him doing it. He held the gun like this. You're telling mm. me that 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 you're telling me on a live show right now that a judge would not accept that as evidence. Or say it was I on a public know. street. There no, were multiple no, 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 witnesses. No, 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 that is not what I said at all. They would accept it as evidence, of course they would, but. Yeah. What if 500 not, people saw it? But it would not be as valuable as evidence as, say, finding that gun, finding the bullets, et cetera, et cetera. Because right now, you know, you get it's my word against yours kind of territory. Okay, so, so what if I went to SJ's house right now on this live show right now? I got off camera. Mm -hmm. I got off camera. And I went to SJ's house mm -hmm. right now. And I got a machine gun and I blew it a split of reason. Got 45 okay, we can barely hear you. So, so we got 45 people watching me murder her right now. You just got finished watching me murder her. You're mm -hmm. telling me that that kind of evidence doesn't work in court? 
Well, but that's not eyewitness evidence. That would be photographs. Everybody just watch me kill her. See, it's photographs. Give me a favor, SJ, and, and expire, SJ. Just die real quick here. Oh. So, so basically, SJ's dead right now. You saw it happen to 45 <laughs> people are watching this, and mm -hmm. all of this. And the, the judges are going to take that into consideration. You said that's the weakest form of evidence. But you, I, I guess fingerprints is a stronger evidence, right? That I Absolutely went there and I blew her head stronger. off. Absolutely fingerprints okay, are stronger. Okay, so how do you know I didn't visit her house and touch her doorknob? Don't. I don't <laughs> oh, know listen that. Listen to me. Listen to me. See, how see, do you know? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Bayan. Because I'm asking these questions for a reason. It's not wrong. just one piece. There is no silver wait, bullet. Wait a minute. Because you're strongmanning my position. So hold on a minute, okay? You don't know if I've been to SJ's house. You don't know if I touched anything at SJ's house. You don't know if I did anything with SJ. The you're point right, is I you don't. found a fingerprint. And you're mm -hmm. telling me a fingerprint is stronger than somebody saying I saw him do it? Yes. As, uh, uh, you don't understand crime at all. No, so anyway, no, with my dude, example, dude, 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 with dude. my example, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. With my example that I gave earlier, you found a person hanging from a, uh, from, from a room or whatever, and there's blood all over the floor. And I said in the beginning of the show that you walked in on that crime scene, you immediately deduced, boom, that's a suicide. Then the professionals I'm not saying, came I'm not saying that at all. If I, if I walked onto that scene, the very last thing I would do is go, boom, I know exactly what happened. No part of me would ever do that. Okay, I, might, I agree with you there. I, okay, I agree with you there. I'll give you that. But, but even then, if, if the dude hanged himself, and it is hanged, not hung, by the way, uh, and I saw blood on the floor, I'd have to go looking for where that blood came from because usually you're not going to get a lot of blood off of okay. the dude. Okay, so I'm, I'm giving you that. I'm giving you that. Now, let's talk about this here for a moment. Yeah. The only way you can know that it wasn't a suicide because you did the work for me, basically. The only way that you can know that that's not a suicide if you did an investigation. It's... You said, and I listened to you say this, that you don't necessarily know who wrote, who wrote these books in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Tell me something, mm -hmm. Bionic Dance. Without using Google, how do you know who wrote the book of Genesis? I don't. How do you know who wrote the book of Matthew? I don't. When you did your investigation, how do you know who wrote the book of Matthew? I actually didn't do my investigation the way you put it. What I did was I looked at other people's investigations and saw and saw that, oh, dude, stop acting like that's some sort of slam dunk. And I the saw- slam dunk is over. No, it's <laughs> not. Because you know what? Hey. More to it than just that. Okay. So wait. You heard yes. somebody else say it and you believed it. That no, was still I on did, a oh show. My the number God. two bionic. Dance. Wait a minute. The number two bionic. Dance. You ain't do no real investigation. Dude, you ain't do no real work. You didn't study. Okay, you know what? You didn't let me finish. Wait, you guys, I want to say something. I'm asking the crowd now, just so you guys don't have like a back and forth that gets a little bit too testy, but I'm asking yeah. the crowd to come up with questions for you. Is that okay that's with you guys? That. Yeah, that's totally cool. Yeah, sure but, sure. but here's the thing. I saw what they said. I saw the points they brought up. I did not accept it on their say so. I saw it and they would give citations, bibliographies, all kinds of stuff for me to check and check and check to find all of that evidence, right? So um, that is different from the Bible says it, I believe it, that settles it. Okay, so tell me something. What kind of evidence do you think that myself and it, because I think we've done a whole lot more homework than you've ever done in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of evidence do you think we have for who wrote the book of, who wrote the Torah? Or Actually, that's a question. That's a God. question. Joker face 49 G-Man is asking if you know who wrote the Bible, how do you know who wrote the Bible? Well, again, that. we have biblical scholars who have done the, who have done the homework and have done their research. And we, not to mention, we actually have the Dead Sea Scrolls and we have, we, we actually How many have of them that. weren't Christians? Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a minute. Well, actually, I don't expect a non-Christian to. Well, actually, come and think about it. Everybody from Matthew, I'm sorry, not from Matthew, from Genesis to Malachi were not Christians. You want to know why? That wasn't my question. Jesus wasn't born yet. That Any wasn't my that question. You want to say now? That so anyway, wasn't so my question. My question was how many of these biblical scholars weren't Christians? Okay, so I can give you people who have investigated the, re the resurrection who wasn't a Christian. Simon Greenleaf, I can give you the names of people who did this stuff before they actually became Christians. We have some prominent uh, Christian theologians. Uh, one who wrote... Um, uh, uh, S.J., the, the one that came to Christ, uh, who was the host of Faith Under Fire. I keep, Lee Strobel. Lee Strobel was a person that investigated the, um, the resurrection before he came to Christ. So don't even go there, Bionic Dance, with that. So anyway, my point is this. Don't even go there. I'm, my, I'm my point is this. My, my point is this, is that we have church fathers. We have theologians. We have very smart people who have gone to school and have studied and done their homework who, who compare the authors. First of all, do you know what an author is? Um, 
uh, 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 Bionic Dance? Of course I know what an author is. What's an author, Bionic Dance? An author is someone who writes something like a book this, or an it, article, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not talking about that kind of author. Concerning okay. The scriptures, what's an author? I honestly don't care. <laughs> okay. That would be what we would call the originals, okay? Do you know what a scribe is? Sure. What's a scribe? Well, a scribe is someone who writes things down. Sometimes, right, they're, right, right, sometimes right, right. they're more like a stenographer, but yeah. that's what they all right. do. All right, all right. Do you know what happened at the Council of Nicaea? Uh, probably, but remind me. Okay, at, at the Council of Nicaea, the, uh, the, uh, a debate arose on whether or not Jesus Christ was God or not between the mm -hmm. Arians and between other believers. And they concluded at the Council of Nicaea that Jesus was in fact God. Now, the reason why I'm asking you these things is because um, we Christians know that we have theologians and we have uh, uh, a copy, some really old copies of the originals uh, that, that were written in Greek and that was written in Hebrew. So some of them are the Dead Sea Scrolls, some of them other parts that we found, you know what I mean? Where we can compare what we have today with, with what was written back then. We also know the time space in between, let's say the book of Genesis and let's say the book of Daniel or like from Daniel to the book of Matthew. All right. And we can. And if you ever go to church, if you ever decide to do that one time in your life and actually go to a Sunday school, you'll have one of them tell you when uh, uh, Daniel was written, when Matthew was written and the differences between the two, how Daniel was written in Hebrew, all the biblical prophecies that are made in the book of Daniel, how and how, how uh, we know that uh, the book of Matthew is written in Greek. They found the book of Matthew and it was written in Greek. You know what I mean? How we know these things. OK, you how know Matthew, my eyes are glazing how over, Matthew right? was point. one of his disciples, how John was one of his disciples. We could tell by the penmanship that the that the apostle John, who wrote the Gospel of John, is the same John that wrote first John, second John, third John and the Gospel of John. There's a lot of different ways we know uh, who wrote these particular books. What you have is is what a skeptic said about the Bible. Who disagrees with it and you believe oh, it? Oh, see, here, here is a problem that I encounter with religious people, not just Christians, all the time. You're just where... as religious as I am. Don't be fair now. Play nice with the kids. You're just as religious. I actually as I have am. a lot of questions that have come in for both of you guys. You guys want to take some questions and try to just do like quick short? Yeah, answers? let's do that. Let's do that. Um, <laughs> Bionic dance, calm down. We've been doing this for a long time, so just chill, relax. Come on. Yeah, but still. <laughs> all right. So, Bionic, Craig... uh, by the way, before we get started, Bionic dance. I, I've always said this about you. I do respect what you do on YouTube, all right? Because you're you're one of the few people in here that's focused. You need to go talk to the rest of your your friends out here because some of them have become a drama community and don't even know why they started their channels to begin with. At least when I watch your channel, I'm against Christianity. I'm against Christianity. I'm against that's Christianity. I'm not even I'm against, against Christianity. Christianity necessarily. I, I'm against the way a lot of Christians conduct themselves towards other people. You know, right. the, the, the folks that say, oh, we need prayer in school uh, to, to indoctrinate kids into Christianity, apparently, because they, they, they always assume prayer in school won't be Hindu, that it won't be Islamic, that it will be Christian prayer in school. So Evolution it's clearly indoctrination. Indoctrinate people into and, and, you know, you get, you get the people who say, oh, I'm allowed to not treat a medical patient because they're a Christian. I agree no, with that's you. The, I agree with you. I, I say in my videos all the time that the very instant theists can learn to share and play nicely with the other kids is the day I shut up and do anything. You know what, Bionic Dance? I agree children. with you. They use prayer. So, Some people have used prayer to try to indoctrinate children. Oh, well, not just prayer. A particular religious belief. But okay, let's so be let me fair ask. Now. Evolution is taught the children I, to do the same thing. Evolution is taught to indoctrinate people with atheism. I, I view it as for... activism. That's all it is. If if Christians weren't making nuisances of themselves, I wouldn't be talking you about like atheists do on a regular okay. basis. Uh, don't get started. <laughs> well, let's let's go to a question. So Craig in the bag says, "Bionic dance. Would you become a Christian if you somehow became convinced that Jesus is God?" I would not, and let me tell you why. Because even if I believed it, even if I believed it, Christianity is more of an allegiance than it is anything else. And I look at what's in the Bible and I see God behaving like a, a movie villain. I see God behaving like a real jerk. His body count is thousands higher than Satan's, for example. Okay, so I would, if I found out that the Christian God was real, I would go on a quest for the magic ring or flaming sword that could kill him because he's a danger to all of us. That's what wow. would happen if I was given proof that the Christian God was real. So no, I wouldn't become a Christian. I might believe, but I wouldn't be a Christian. 
you know, we're given a lot of evidence from Jesus himself. I, I think I would just, if to anyone listening, if just read the story of Jesus, just read the gospels and see what he did. Cause I think if you realize that, that your views of what you think God is versus what Jesus presented seem at a, a very dichotomous. So well, I would just definitely look at that. Have you seen the various things God has done that has harmed people according to these scriptures? Uh, according I mean, to your he, opinion? He destroyed the your entire opinion? world at one point because people were misbehaving a little bit. That's not you know, misbehaving a little bit. No, they were supposedly very, very evil. A blood sacrifice to rid us of original sin. You'd think that an allegedly all-powerful God could just go, ah, poof, their original sin's gone. No, no, he had to have his son commit suicide by Roman to like redeem everybody. That makes no sense. That's something a psychopath would do. No, he it's, it's prank on, and it's a uh, okay. 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 Let's go to the next, okay, let's go to the next question. Stone and like stab him through the heart. And at the last second, just kidding. I mean, that is not something nice people That's do. That's not what happened by the way, by did. Uh, you should go read the story. It's in Genesis chapter six and dude, seven. That's not what dude, happened. I've got yeah. videos of me reading exactly that story. Yeah, you read well, going me, uh the uh you can't. Okay, read, so let me video. let me go to another. Let me go to another one here. So um, A Y wants to know who made God, and it says don't avoid the question with blind assertions. And he, mm. he looks like it was directed to me, uh, but I think it could go to G Man too. But I'll say God actually is unmade. He's an unmoved mover. He's the uncaused cause. Uh, he is the um, eternal I am. So the idea that somebody made God or God had a, a beginning uh, isn't consistent with Christian beliefs. So why should we believe any of that? Well, it's, where did energy come from? Where did energy come from? Okay, here's one thing I've noticed from a lot of religious people. The answer, I don't know, or even I don't know yet, let's find out, is something very few are prepared to accept. That's not what I said. You're putting words no, in no, 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 but you believe that this matter and his energy expanded over a long time. I, you don't get to tell me what so I anyway, believe. So anyway, <laughs> so I'm, I'm just talking about your faith, though. So anyway, you don't know where it comes from, but you believe That's that it expanded. Paddling. But anyway, to answer that person's question, I agree with Ashley. God has always been. God is, doesn't have a creator. He's always been. Just like you believe that matter has always been and energy has always I, been. Stop yeah. telling me what I believe. Seriously. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person that asked the question. So uh, let me go. Let me go to another question. I've got Ronan Kanushi says, uh, "G man, do you understand the difference between the mind, emotions, and reality logic? If so, why is there any issue if understanding the two? Is is do you know the difference between the mind, emotions, and reality logic? Emotions is what we show. Our mind is um, our mind is is how we process things and how we think about things. I'm not understanding their question." Our, our, our emotions are what we show. No, our emotions are what our, we our show. emotions is what we show when we're angry. I'm sorry, we we show anger when we're frustrated and then when we're and yeah, when we're, but when but even if we don't show, I mean, right now I could be extraordinarily pissed off at you, and you might never know it. I could actually everybody think, shows their emotions differently. The world and I and you might never know it. Everybody shows their emotions it, differently. But so it's I'm trying to answer the I'm question feeling. that was asked. I can feel. I can feel so like I could put on a, a big old poker face, and you'd never know what I was feeling, but I'm still having emotions. So, so emotions anyway, just, so, so anyway, they, was, they, they asked me a question though. They didn't ask you. They asked me. And uh, again, I'm going to stick to what I said. That emotions is what we show when we're frustrated, know. when we're happy, when we're when we're I don't know uh, in pain or whatever. You know what I mean? Our mind is how we process things. I'm not understanding the question fully. I, yeah, I'm not sure. Not. <laughs> Robert, Robert X wants to know if you guys way of showing it than other people doesn't mean that they're not showing it by understanding. So, so you guys, he, Robert X is saying, can you try not to talk over each other? <laughs> so it's thank you, it's, Robert. Um, so I'm trying to see if there's another question. Someone asked my favorite artist, but I wasn't sure if they wanted to know my favorite, like like visual artist or just anyone. Oh, sure. any, yeah, what's, what's, what's your favorite artist? Uh, well, I'd have to say, in terms of visual artists, I would go with Ralph McQuarrie, who did the concept art for the first three Star Wars movies. Uh, he also designed a mall in San Francisco called the Metreon, which is one of the coolest places I've ever walked into. So if we're talking purely in terms of like painting, drawing, that kind of art, got to go with Ralph McQuarrie. Uh, Bionic Dance, I have a question for you. Are you a denialist, yes or no? I'm going to need you to expand that because people can deny a lot of things. Do you deny reality, yes or no? 
I don't deny reality, but I'm not going to say necessarily that I know exactly what reality is. There are a lot of things that are filtered through our senses, things we cannot see. Sorry, could you repeat that? Things please? that are too small for us to see. Sorry, could you repeat that? We please? haven't discovered yet. So I'm not going to claim to know. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that in the beginning. Wait, uh, to, guys, let, let just trying to. I, I, I said over. no, I'm not a denialist. I, I, I can. I, I'm not denying reality, but I'm also not claiming to know exactly what reality is either. You're, you, you don't know if you're denying reality. No. If you're also not that's claiming that's not that you don't know what reality is. I said I'm not denying yeah, reality, well, balance, but, but I don't necessarily know. I, I don't necessarily know what rea what is and is not real. What have I um, looked at and not quite understood? I don't know. Is it possible that we're all like inside some computer simulation? I don't know. Everything like, you know, the, the statement, I think, therefore I am. That's all I know is that I am Are you a woman. Everything I know. Is it a reality now, that you're a woman? Yeah. Is it a reality that you're a lesbian living in the United States of America? As far as I can tell. Is gay marriage a reality? As far as I can tell. So you do have a pretty good grasp on what reality is. And it's yes, fair but to you'll it notice that what I'm saying is as far as I can tell. I'm not saying yes. I'm saying as I'm saying the evidence would suggest that, and therefore I'm treating it as a conclusion, but tentatively pending new data. Are you connected to a computer laying on your bed with a thing in your head and you actually in something called the matrix? I don't, what? I, I, I want you to say you don't know. Are you in a matrix right now? Or is your real self laying on a bed with a piece of, with a thing in your head. Remember, Miss Epistavis, you don't take anything on faith because you know I'm going to ask you to prove it. Are you laying on a bed, okay, where uh, this thing is in your head like they're doing the Matrix and you're in a computer simulation? Yes or no? I'm not giving you a yes or no. I'm going to tell you, you that did. it seems extraordinarily unlikely. You already did when you say that you didn't know if, 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 we were, if our reality is a Matrix. Yeah, so but but see, I'm not saying yes and I'm not saying no. If I say I don't know, I'm not saying yes or no. So, so let, me, let me just, let me um, a lot interject. Of you don't even know if you're living in reality or not? Well, let me interject because I think well, what, what we, we've got two different positions. So I want to clarify on kind of which, which way, which angle each of you are coming in on. And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so G-Man's coming in the angle that was a, lo a long time for the you know, first couple of thousand years, essentially, or just, just under a couple of thousand years. We had people following this Christian doctrines and this idea that there is an absolute truth. There is an objective morality. Uh, not everything is relative. We've got some level of relativism. But then there's this new thing called postmodernism that was basically saying there is no absolute truth. Uh, everything's based on a desire for power. And we're not exactly certain of our objective reality. We could be inside of a matrix. And I'm wondering on to, I know that G-Man's position is related to the first one, but I'm wondering with Bionic Dance, Kate, is your position that this is sort of a postmodernist existence? Well, I object to the idea that everything is a struggle for power, but with that caveat in mind, I'd say, yeah, postmodern, as you just described it, yes, I would say so. Okay. And, and have you, I don't know if you've looked into those things, because I know it's, it's sort of a big buzzword right now. It's been a big buzzword probably since the 1960s, but a lot of people have been talking about postmodernism and this idea that we have, um, we need to break down all these foundations, all this objectivity and everything's well, relative, relative okay, to a society. Part of the problem is that when I think of postmodernism, the first place my brain goes is artwork. Because that's a genre of artwork is postmodern. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that that particular bias doesn't get in the way of giving these can we use answers. Can a dictionary, please? Can, can we just bring a dictionary into this? Look um, up the word, the definition of the word means, by any means. Look up what the word means. Well, there's two words there, but okay. Uh, give me a sec then. But again, what I'm telling you is that I have a certain amount of bias when it comes to postmodernism simply because of the artwork aspect. No, that's I'm, fair. That, that's I, all. Um, see, the, the reason I mean, I'm, I'm here, asking I'm that is because it, it really defines, it defines societies quite a bit if we don't have any absolute truths or any absolute certainty. 
it, it defines really everything that we do. So if you, if you wanna say, for example, that what the Nazis did is objectively wrong, and we wanna tell all of the United States and all of the people in the world that what the Nazis did is objectively wrong, we need to be able to pull to a normal standard, an objective standard. If we right. don't have those standards, which postmodernists don't believe we do, then we have no um, sort of what you call a, a goalpost against which to judge people's actions as being yeah. correct or incorrect or valuing life, liberty, justice. And, and, I, and I don't think we have that beyond our own feelings. I don't think that there is an objective anything with regard to morality. The best I can do with regard to the Nazis and say is say, I wouldn't much care to either do what they were doing or to have it done to me. And a lot of people agree that they would rather not have what the Nazis were doing be part of their lives. And for me, that's good enough. If you want me to say it's wrong, and I hate that term, honestly, I, I would say it's undesirable. It's unacceptable. Desirable. I don't want it. But to say that it is wrong in any objective sense, well, I challenge someone to show me a non-opinion, a non-emotion based way that that is, in fact, wrong well it's As gonna opposed, actually it's gonna don't do it because i don't care for it show well, me the, I, I will i will tell you but i have to say i don't see there's a way to do that without bringing in some emotion because what exactly happened to the jews for example what they would do is they would work them in a sisyphian way so they'd have them digging big holes and then filling the holes up again and then when they were completely just exhausted malnourished and everything else they told them hey we're going to give you a shower so they squeezed them all into a room they scrunched mm -hmm. them in there and then they burned them to death and if you can't say that that's objectively wrong, then I think your moral system needs some re-examination. Why? What's wrong with, if, if I'm gonna point to that and say that's undesirable, I don't want it to happen. I think a lot of people will agree with me that that is a horrible thing to do. Why do I need more than that? Because you okay. need to be able to, it's, it's like when our founding fathers here in the United States in the Declaration of Independence said, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created but equally. Be, well, but okay, they hold it to be self-evident, but so what? I mean, show me, show me that, that there is any evidence whatsoever beyond those opinions that there is anything morally objective out there in any way, shape, or form. Show it to me. You said that guy was objectively wrong for impregnating. Uh, as a matter of fact, you I'll quote all of say it. that. For me, well, actually, you have a video on your YouTube channel calling God a D, and then you went on to say that he raped Mary. You know what I mean? Then you said that okay. he was that he was wrong Here's for flooding the, the earth, part. for destroying Here's Sodom and Gomorrah. Part. Did but, I? Well, but but, but wait a minute! You didn't start your sentence off with "in my opinion." You just said so he was. Right. Wrong. So what? So what? I, mean, I, I did I or use? I'm a subscriber. Objective. And did you I never use said in my opinion. Did I use the word objective? Again, if you don't start off your sentence with um, in my opinion, if you don't start and, and you got a brand new viewer watching you, it's automatic, it's automatically gonna be understood that you believe that these things are objective. Well, true. you know what I also say? Don't run on automatic. Instead, please think. Is that That's objectively like the true? Line yes, of no. my video. So if you're saying that people will automatically assume X, Y, or Z, well, they're wrong to do it. Well, again, Bionic Dance, you and a lot of other atheists here on YouTube, unfortunately, try to like uh, combine subjective and objective morality together. If you want I people don't. to understand, if you want I people don't. to understand, if you want people to understand that that your views is merely just your opinion. In the beginning of your YouTube videos, you should put the views and the blah, blah, blah of this video is the opinion of the uploader, not necessarily okay. the atheist community. And then when you make a claim about myself, and other Christians on YouTube about being chowderheads. You should say, in my opinion, and you don't do that. You're playing word games. I, like, I, wanna, no, I am not playing word games. Yo, I do want to say I'm what I'm, what I'm going to do. In any way, you are the one right now being. No, I'm not. I'm going to have okay, you. Well, wait, guys, let's not, let's not go down and fight. <laughs> say, let, me oh, just get to, exactly. let me just get to something here. So I want to say, I, I definitely want to say thank you to both of you for, for coming on the video. And, you know, we still got a little bit more to, to go, but I also wanted to say, I'm going to do a link. I have a link in there to G-Man's channel. I'm going to add a link to um, Bionic Dance's channel so you guys can all go in. Is it just called Plain Bionic Dance? Yeah, and there's no space between those two. People always make that mistake. There's no space between Bionic and Dance, whether it's a URL or the actual name, no space. That's okay. the way to find her channel is capital B, Bionic, and then the last with the last part, Dance, capital D, and, and, and obviously Dance, obviously here. Yeah. So.
That's a fascinating well, way to the reason I, I want to say the, that the reason why I was asking Bionic Dance, the reason why I was asking you about um, objective morality is because at the very beginning of the conversation, you pointed out that there's no reason to have God. But one of the things that Nietzsche pointed out that he even realized as an atheist that there actually is a good reason to have God. And one of the good reasons is the justification for uh, a moral claim that it's wrong what they did in Nazi era. So it's we have okay. an objective morality. And so that's the but that's the. the there are tons of problems with that, though, because, uh, I mean, number one, we don't know that God exists. Number two, uh, the difference between objective and subjective is personal opinion versus something that would be so even if there were no minds to sustain the idea. If God is handing down uh, moral edicts, that's just God's opinion. That's a subjective morality. So the only way to have objective morality is if every thinking creature in the entire universe died out and didn't exist anymore, these things would still be true. That's why almost everything that's objective is something that is physical, something that can be proved by science, because it has an existence outside our own heads. So yeah. to, to say well, actually, that that's grounds us in objective morality is to not understand what the word objective even means. No, you're right. And I, I you're right in a, in a way. I do want to clarify though what you're saying, because I want to go back to the academic literature on objective morality and point out how it's defined in the academic literature. They don't say it's mind independent. They say it's stance independent. So the idea of being objective is means it's no matter what my stance is with respect to the value of life, uh, we still value life. So even if everybody on the planet had, took a stance against the value of life and agreed that the Nazis were right, we would still objectively know that we should be valuing life. How? We have an in, innate, actually, it's born within our conscience. If you ever wonder why we have this guilt, okay. why, why do humans feel guilt? It's because God has planted inside of us a conscience, mm -hmm. according to Romans. We have empathy and there's no God required. But I mean, my, my question, my, like, this is one of my favorite analogies, and I've never heard a Christian address it, so I'd really like that. Um, if there's a lion that's hungry, and it's pursuing a gazelle, and the gazelle still wants to live and not be eaten by the lion, which one of them is objectively morally right? Neither one of them, because morality deals with human beings and not animals. Okay. So, so, bi so, so bionic dance. My question for but, you, but, and I just no, dealt with so you the first You've person. missed the point. You've so, missed so, the point so, of the so, argument. So, so bionic dance. You really missed the point of the analogy. Bionic, you always say that there's no evidence for the existence of God, right? You always well, wait. Say let actually for a second there, Gina. Let her continue with the because I'm not sure what she was trying to get at. I'm, let me just see what. Uh, the, point, right. the point of the analogy is that there are two points of view. And there are two uh, entities out there that want to live and their desires are mutually exclusive. For one of them to live, the other has to die, um, either of starvation or of being eaten by the lion. So if we get into a situation um, in, in human affairs where there are two competing moral ideas, I mean, I'm sure the Nazis thought what they were doing was perfectly swell, right? And they might've said, we have an objective reason to think that the Jews are horrible people and thus we get to do this, that, and the other thing to them. And they thought that was just dandy. Whereas the rest of us were like, yeah, that's not okay. And we want to stop that. Whose intuitive sense was right? Whatever okay, God so, right. Well, I, and how I, do you, actually more importantly, how do you tell? No, I, I wanted to say what, what, as far as what we believe, uh, you said Christians haven't answered that question. We believe in human exceptionalism. We believe that humans are given this conscience, but actually I wouldn't go so far as to say that we don't see some level of conscious and sentient beings. Like my dog, my dog actually feels guilt if she has an accident inside the house. So I can mm -hmm. see she's got some level of conscience uh, and some level of guilt that we feel too. So there is something going on in the animal kingdom that's related to us. But I can say that we know that there's human exceptionalism, that we're uh, the top of the food chain, if you will, and it's mentioned there in Genesis. And so that's just something that we would say that that human value of life is very important and animal value is subs uh, subservient to us. Okay, so why should I believe that? Uh, with it? Like, like if the Bible didn't exist, do you think I'd still believe that? If God didn't exist, would I still believe that? I'm not sure, I'm not sure what would you. Okay, I mean, because that's my question. The, I can answer that question. One of, one of my favorite catchphrases, again, um, is no God required. I'll point to something and I'll point to how it could totally exist and a God is completely superfluous to the equation. That's not true. And so I have to ask, do we need God to have any morality whatsoever? Yes, you do. Because without God, without a moral lawgiver, there are, there are no laws. 
and there's no right or wrong on anything. Why should I, I believe a perfect that? Example. Why should if, I believe if, that? If, if no God existed whatsoever, there would be nothing wrong with LGBTQ. If there was no God, if, if no God existed, there would be nothing wrong with killing people at all. I can go to your house and kill you wait, and not wait, feel guilty about it whatsoever. And let me tell you why. why, why hold on. Let me tell you why. Just Listen, why I'm about to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. There's yeah. nobody telling me it's wrong. Other but, people but, might tell you it's wrong. You again, Bionic Dance, because the animals. Other people might tell you it's wrong. Dance. I'm not finished yet. You're good. You don't like it if people interrupt you, but you love interrupting me. The, the, the animal kingdom ain't going around saying, praise Jesus, praise the Lord, and whatnot, even though you think you're an animal and everything and whatnot. But in the animal kingdom, the, these animals out there don't got something ruling over them called the God or whatever, according to okay. you or whatever, or, or even us, some of us. Okay. The bottom line is that human beings have somebody telling them, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, because these things go against the nature of God. Now, if uh -huh. you take God out the picture, then we're just like the animals in your evolutionary worldview, hmm. and then whatever I want, and there is no right or there's no wrong. As long as okay, we have an objective but... moral, hold on a minute. As long as we have an objective moral lawgiver, we are always going to come to the conclusion that something is right and wrong. You do things that you believe is right, and you do things that you believe is wrong. If someone you know raped why? you, if someone raped you, it, okay, like for example, let's say let's say you was a quote unquote gazelle, right? Sure. And another gazelle decided they just wanted to hump you without getting your permission or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that because that's nature. But you're not a gazelle. You're a human being. You're on top of the you're on top of the the the, uh, the food chain. So if, an, if, well, so if I have a man in your house and force myself on you, number yeah. one, I know I did something wrong. I know it's hurting you. you? It's not causing you to thrive. And 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 I'm gonna get in a lot of trouble for doing so why, it. So but why do you need a God for any of that? Why do you need a God for any of that? Because I want to I want to interject really quickly. Stephen Steen did a, a super chat. I want to say thank you, Stephen Steen. He said he just joined, but he knows that G-Man already won because G-Man always wins. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, no, but seriously. I mean, why why would I need a God to feel bad about causing someone else harm? Why would I need a God for that? Well, bionic dance again. God, the, our God is our objective moral lawgiver. He's the one who uh, tells that's us not my what, question. what is wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explain it to you. I'm not going to change my no, story. No, 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 no. You, you've already explained it, but I don't. But tell me something. Let's say God what? doesn't exist. Let's say what it's if not God... real. Okay. Hold on a minute. I'm going to hit you with the same question. Let's say it's not real. Yeah. What's yeah. stopping me from coming to your house and blowing your head off? The police. I don't care about what the police think. That's their opinion. My opinion well, is. Well, I think it's shot. Off. That's okay. Get no, 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 no. You don't get no warning when I come over there to do it. See, the, right. what's stopping me from doing that by this? And I want to read a scripture to you. In, well, in the, the Bible front gate might but, stop but, you but, just but a little bit. What's stopping me from doing that is thou shalt not kill. All right. Okay, so, so the if Bible, there was no God, I'm if there were no to make a point by it, you go out and kill. Me by it, you hate when people do it to you. If this is uh, my channel, you'd be muted and you know it. Second Thessalonians talks about how when the when 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 the spirit of God is taken out of this earth. It's going to be a free fall down here. You people are going to be able to do whatever you want. I know it's the restraining influence, and you can sit there and deny that you're blue in the face. That's all fine and well. Who cares? If you want, if you don't want to go to hell, you need to change your mind. But the bottom line is, is that the restraining I've been influence, to hell. I was there for four years. The restraining, I mean, high school, the restraining but influence. The re listen to me, Viana Dance. The restraining influence of the Holy Spirit was stopping me from coming over there and just saying, you know what? I don't like you and pal. That honestly, that that's what it is. And one day, that restraint is going to be removed, as well as the entire church as well. And then you're going to see, and it's going to be too late by then. Yeah, you're you gonna know, take the mark man, there is one thing that, like, if you decide to come over to my place and try to kill me or exactly. whatever, do me any kind of harm, I know one thing that could stop you. The force? Ooh, I got one of those too, but mine's bigger than yours. Well, you guys, <laughs> I, I want to say something. Wow, well, so you guys. Actually, you want to know the truth, though? This is where the batteries go. It's totally fake. <laughs> so let me uh, I, I want to bring this up because we're I actually coming up on so cool. we're, we're coming up on a couple oh. hours here and I, I think <laughs> here we started off this video G-Man and I were going to review Bionic Dance and Bionic Dance was ever so kind to be in the audience and to be willing thank to you, come Bionic. on here but and to you. face the lion's den if you want to call it that so she just came in here with two Christians who are kind of uh, uh that respect for the hit rabbit hit lesbian hit. 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 that respect <laughs> So I, I think we had a good conversation and I think we should continue it some oh my gosh does she have a real gun Wow. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I just said that that's where the batteries went. It's fake. Oh, okay, good. good. I know Bionic Dance was playing. It's a, it's a toy. Right. I've had it since the 90s before they had to make all the guns bright orange. Yeah, normally that little orange tip. I was looking for that. So, <laughs> no, okay. Bionic Dance, I think you would be a great help to this community if you did this more often because, again, a lot of people in your community. Well, 
Yeah. I'm willing to come back on a stream like this. I think I enjoy Well, next time we'll come on G-Man's channel another... and G-Man won't mute you. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I mean, it's just that, that it's, it, uh, there are times I definitely feel a little gish galloped by G-Man. He'll make, he'll make a point that's completely out of the stratosphere. And then it's 10 more minutes before he lets me address it. You know, you changed my mind, Bionic Dance, on, uh, and I don't know if you noticed that shit, but you know, Bionic Dance is, is one of the people responsible for me saying that I don't believe America is a Christian nation. She has a video on her YouTube channel where she goes into what's going on in this country. When I, she actually changed my mind about that. Hmm. Well, I mean, when you think like about it, um, she English, she was this close. She English is not the official close. language of the United States, and the United States also doesn't have an official religion any more than it has an official language. A lot of people don't like to believe that, but it's true. Mm. It's interesting. I got it's friends a, that would disagree with you, but I agree with you. I don't think America is a Christian. Okay, either. well, well, show show me any bit of government anything that mandates a uh, a, a national religion. I double dog dare you. I know that's one of the example, things that that, that actually but, Jesus kind of spoke to that a little bit. He said, uh, "Let let what Caesar's let Caesar what was he? He was looking at a coin. He said, let Caesar's.'" Uh, he said, uh, he said, I can't uh, say that. Right? What is Caesar's and render under God? What is God's? Is that yeah, the one? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, I, somebody in the chat asked if I thought that communism and atheism are one. Uh, here's what I think about communism and atheism. I think that most communist regimes have been run by atheistic governments. And unfortunately, that's played out in a pretty horrific way in the last century for uh, the Soviet Union. See, see, that's a horrible, horrible, China, horrible thing to say. Cambodia. Because, I mean, was anything done in the name of atheism? What is, yes, was it? actually, we've, I've got a, in my, one of my blogs, and you guys, if you go to my blog, it's christian-apologist.com, but I've got a blog that actually documented from the government exactly what Stalin did in communist regimes to eliminate churches and houses of worship. Uh, okay, he was very but, active but against that, religion and expound, expo, you know, expunging religion. But did he do that because he either didn't believe in a God or yeah. because he thought God didn't exist or... Was it, as most historians agree, more of a power grab because the church was in power and he needed to take power away? And it I'm, I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a combination of a lot of factors. And I, the interesting thing is, daughter said in one of her books that he died shaking his fist at God. So even though he had an atheist government, he did not like God. He had an opinion on God. Oh, if I, I mean yes, that that, that would tend to make one suspect that maybe he believed in God privately, right, right, publicly he was against it though? because again the church had way too much power that he needed to take over. By any chance, would you be willing to host this on your channel, by any chance? I mean, I could. I, I don't do a lot of live streams on my own channel. I'm usually in other people's channels, but I totally could. You would get a lot more views, that's for sure. Especially if we had a conversation <laughs> like this. My oh my God. gosh, John Lloyd is actually asking me to check out Flat Earth. Do not get me started on Flat Earth. I don't really have huge opinions on it. I mostly have avoided that discussion because it's silly. But I don't think you've been on the moon. My, my atheist YouTube colleagues have gotten so much into debunking Flat Earth. We've never here. been to the moon. I'm going to say we've never been to the moon. I don't believe in Flat Earth. Oh, I don't believe in the moon. Oh my gosh. Okay. Are you on a dance? We could talk about that someday, but I don't believe you've been to the moon. And I have my reasons. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Okay, so let, let's go to this. Well, let's talk about how to, how, um, what are your new projects? You guys want to, well, let's close this out and let's just go to maybe Bionic Dance first. If you want to mention what you're working on now, what videos you're planning on making or how people can find well, you and then we'll go to G-Man. I, I did see Ben Shapiro say something extraordinarily stupid recently, so I might be responding to him. Uh, I am also working on a new background for my green screen. It looks sort of like a, uh, um, sort of a, brighter, less dystopian cyberpunk future kind of thing with cars flying around and stuff, sort of like Coruscant in Star Wars, if you've watched the uh, prequel trilogy. And um, I'm also working on a larger narrative fiction animation called Quinn Redshift. I actually need to recast some of the parts. So if anyone out there has any acting abilities, contact me and I'll tell you about that. Uh, and I am also working on, let's see, I don't, see my custom playing cards. I made some custom playing cards a while back and I really liked how they came out. And I've had an idea in my head for, uh, uh, well, originally I had the idea for a video game, but I'm not a programmer, so I might make it into a board game, uh, basically about uh, like aliens attacking a medieval village is the theme of the game. It's called Abductions and Dragons. And that's a project I'm working on as well. That's about all I have planned out. But if I that's see any other videos making wacky ass claims, I'll probably respond to those too. 
You know, I find it interesting that you just said Ben Shapiro. I just listened to two of his videos this morning and I'm a huge fan of Ben Shapiro. I just listened to him on Liberty University and I listened to another one that he did. And he's, and I have to say, that's probably where you and I are different. <laughs> Was one of them the video about why atheism slash secularism is on the rise in the United States? No, he's is that a new one? Mother beardy dude with glasses on. Was on the rise. I haven't seen that one, I don't think. Okay, go- well, that's, that's, um, yeah, that's that's the one I'm thinking about responding to. I, I don't know if you can see. I tried to share it, but I don't know if this thing works properly. I see a dark screen right now. You would have um, to. There you go. Yeah. So, I'm, G-Man, how can we find you and what are you working on? All right. Uh, uh, Moshe, you probably already know. This, share but, screen. Uh, <laughs> just, just go to my G-Man channel. If you can't find G-Man when you type in G-Man, because there's a lot of G-Man that's on YouTube. Type XX0054, that's my old account. And uh, I'm going to be doing the G podcast in about two weeks. Uh, I'm going to be doing season seven. It's going to last a little longer than the other seasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to be uh, having some really popular Hebrew Israelites on my YouTube channel, as well as uh, other Christians on my YouTube channel as well, like Volcat Malone and, and uh, Sister Cherry and all of them. Uh, as far as my GTV channel goes, I'm going to be doing a lot of parodies on there soon. Uh, I'm going to be starting a, a really interesting project um, uh, toward the end end of the summer where i'm finally going to get into the monetization game so i'll i'll leave all of that with that or whatever but mm-hmm. um but uh that, that's what i'm doing right now i got the g podcast nice. coming in about two weeks and you know i'll be <laughs> responding to my advance some of the things that she said in this video on my on my gtv channel technical <laughs> question does anyone know how to stop sharing using zoom i want to get rid of my screen here yes well wait i can see that screen so who, what does that title say because i can't read that from uh, it says why atheism slash secularism is on the rise in the united states okay go to so we can find share. that go to but share screen i, I that that control has gone away all i see right now is you me and sj in a small you little need three click, windows. okay you need to click on the three boxes that we're on and come back to that or on the top of your screen is going to say close or it's going to say like, like like on the very top of your screen there's going to be some options up there you see them there on the very top they're not there no. it's giving me some options to the top. so let's see uh stop participant sharing you want me to stop sharing that oh yeah do that do that yeah, she okay. can do that and if i had co-mods i could do it that should work <laughs> I just did it. Stop hmm. participant share. Wait. Make oh, me a you know what? Now. That's what happened. It 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 put the the share thingy. Okay. There you go. Oh, now we're back. There we go. Okay. Yeah. That that this Zoom app did something really strange that I didn't expect. But okay. <laughs> All right. So my only thing is, I'm like I said, I'm happy you came here. You definitely oh, I didn't react are a lot more challenging than some of the morons I deal with on a regular basis, but you definitely are a lot more challenging than them. I got to give you credit with that. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it. So listen, I want to say thank you guys, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and cut this out. I got to go make some, actually, I bought chicken uh, drumettes and I'm going to be putting them in an air fryer right now and That's making delicious. some. delicious. You got to mail me some. <laughs> yeah, by the time it gets there, it won't be very good. <laughs> no. So I got to go make some dinner for everybody, but uh. And my kids are off tomorrow because this strawberry festival. So we're not going to the strawberry festival. My kids are off of school. So they're really excited about that. All their friends are over right now. So it's good. So next Sunday, we're on hmm. my channel, SJ? Yeah. Next Sunday, your channel. Sound right. good? Yep. Next Sunday, we'll be on my YouTube channel. Uh, Bye on the dance. You're welcome to come if you want, because we're going to probably be reviewing one of your videos again. All right. Well, whatever if you want us to, I suppose. If you have a recommended review, if you do that thing on Ben Shapiro, I can guarantee you we will re- review that because I happen to love Ben Shapiro. So, I mean, I would love to. <laughs> I have a feeling you and I have different. And I actually started off as a Democrat. I consider myself a moderate now. I don't lean totally to the right on a lot of things. Um, I lean to the left on some things, but do, I tend uh, to agree with some of the, uh, no. I mean, actually kind of a lot of what Ben Shapiro says. Well, I, I, I was raised in too. South Burlington, Vermont. Bernie Sanders has been part of my life since I was four. So um, I, I was raised by hippies as well. My views are pretty solidly left wing. Hmm. Oh, you're now a we should have I a chat about politics. Back. I, yeah. I gotta get Veckel in here because you're a leftist now. I gotta get Veckel in here. Get, yeah, get Veckel. That, I think we, we should definitely have a chat about politics. And I think it could be really interesting because G-Man tends to lean, I think you're kind of more in the middle like I am, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of in the middle too. And then uh, my parents, so here's the funny thing, just before we leave. My parents raised me as a Republican. I was a big fan of Reagan. Then 
they left the church, the Christian church, they left the Catholic church in my twenties and I left the church too. And then we all became liberal Democrats. And so everybody in my family, now my parents, my mom was helping out with Bernie's polit you know, political thing last round. She was actually making calls for him. So she's a huge Bernie fan. So now when I told them that I've left the democratic party and I'm in the middle, they are very upset about that. They keep calling me to slam Trump you know, on the phone. <laughs> So, so this is, I've, I've heard it all, you know, and I've got it, my husband's a big Republican. So I also have that influence. So it's, it's been crazy. So by the way, you were asking me a little while ago for a uh, better picture to use than the thumbnail you chose. Yes, yeah, send me. I'm thinking this right here might be the best way to go. Oh, just use ours when it, when it all comes out, this three picture. All right. No, 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 no. I'm sharing my screen again. Oh, okay. I'm looking at the wrong screen here. Hey, Bionic Dance. Somebody oh, that you one. Know. Okay. <laughs> hey, Bionic Dance, can you send me that picture in case it doesn't come out on the on the thumbnails? Can you send me that by by um, Gmail? I can do that. Okay. And I'll change the, the thumbnail so it's that picture. Uh, that looks kind of scary, uh, though. It go up air. It is, but, you know, I'm pretty good with Photoshop, so. Yeah, Bionic <laughs> Dance. John Lloyd says, Bionic Dance is, don't do that because I'll use that. <laughs> And then John Lloyd says, Bionic Dance is too good looking to be an atheist. And this is all in caps. I see it. <laughs> yep. Well, that's yep. a nice compliment. I'll, I'll take it. I'll I mean, definitely take it. So very good. Well, everybody, thank you so much. Everybody who's in here, I, I want to appreciate the fact that you came in. And uh, please like and subscribe and do come again. And thank you so much. And you'll see us again next week and uh, maybe Bionic Dance again too. So we know G-Man and I will be on next week, but Bionic Dance has the option to join us. Yeah, All right. Good job, Bionic All right. Dance, for coming on here and not trolling and actually being serious and staying focused. Good job. Oh, believe me, immediately after I close the window, I'm going to be ranting and swearing. No kidding. Uh <laughs> I don't think Bernie is the most centrist candidate. Amiga Nuts, I just want to point that out really quickly. I actually um, think Joe Biden uh, is pretty centrist. Klobuchar, well, um, those are some other options. Compared to the rest of the world, Bernie is a centrist. Like, like the United States has slid so far to the right that uh, like, like centrist to us is rabid and screaming right winger to the rest of the world. Yeah, now I think we need to talk about this. I, I have a lot of uh, thoughts on this. So let's let's plan this for our next call, guys. What do you think? Yeah, we'll All right. do, definitely, yeah. All right, thank you, everybody. Peace. Okay, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Ending the chat. All right, I'll, 